Seven years late. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm calling to order this adjourned um, annual town meeting. Today is May 7, 2019. This is the adjourned session from May 4th, 2019. The time is now 7.07 .07 p.m. We have well over 100 voters, just even in precincts one and two. Um, the girls are checking, and I shouldn't be discriminatory, the clerks are checking in. Everyone in there well over that in at least two of the precincts, so we're gonna proceed. Uh, the tellers have been sworn, and we're back, down, we're back to Mr. Pepe, Mr. Armstrong, and Mr. Basler. The warrant having been previously declared properly noticed with the constable's return of service. And as tradition dictates, we uh, waive the reading of the warrant. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. The Mass Moderators has a, um, a group that we all join when you're a moderator, and it's called the Mass Moderators Association. And something that came out across earlier um, today was just a tidbit of information that I found extremely interesting. William Bradford held the very first town meeting in these United States of America. Of course, you remember it wasn't the United States of America. Um, it was just the colonies in 1622 right here in Bay Colony. So I thought that was very interesting that the very first town meeting was had in 1622 here. So moving on, um, I'm going to run over to the um, rules of the meeting. Town meeting is run for a town meeting time as Kingston bylaws dictate. If you wish to address town meeting, raise your hand and step to a microphone. Wait to be recognized and then you can step to the microphone. During debates on the articles, Kingston bylaw, keep comments focused on the articles and do not make things personal. Let's remember to respect each other, and only one person shall speak at a time. If you have a point of order and you need to raise a question, such as, is the speaker entitled to the floor? Is what the speaker is saying frivolous, irrelevant, frivolous, illegal, or contrary to procedure? Or is there any pending action before the board, before the floor, frivolous, irrelevant, illegal, or contrary to procedure? These are not seconded, nor debated, amended, or reconsidered. It's moderator's sole discretion. Question of privilege, if your issues, if you um, are going to raise an issue that your rights are being affected at this meeting or your privileges, i.e. the safety, dignity, integrity, volume, temperature, noise, interference um, with your ability to hear, speak, or participate, then please yell out question of privilege. Um, as I've said many times now, there's been issues on uh, people feeling intimidated at town meeting. Everyone has the right to vote as they choose to vote. You shall not ever address anyone on how they voted, why they voted, or in any other manner. Please just allow everybody to vote as they choose. Um, if you make a motion to amend, you can make the motion, but then you need to have it in writing. Um, and I'm hoping that I have the ones I'm going to need for tonight. I have a feeling I won't. I don't, but um, the motion will not be debated until it is in writing, and, um, and we will address that. If you have a motion to consider right now pursuant to Kingston bylaw, you need to make it tonight. We're hoping to get through all the articles tonight. Um, or if we don't, then by 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. But we're hoping to finish tonight. If you want to call the question, if you feel the debate has gone on long enough, then you can step to the microphone um, and ask that they call the question. And then um, we will um, obviously take a feel of the floor, take a vote, and find out how that is. Um, does everybody, I want the doorways left open. That's for fire and police. Um, everybody should be seated unless you're going to speak. And again, keep your conversations if you need to go outside. Again, for civility, it's okay that we all can disagree with each other, but it's not okay to be disrespectful. De debating issues is a cornerstone of our government, and it's a wonderful right of voters. Expect everyone to follow these rules and to be respectful. As always, we're going to do time, time limits of two minutes and only twice at the mic. I want to thank um, our, our baby is back again for his second town meeting. <laughs> He's been a busy boy. <laughs> um, all right, so for everybody to know, as of right now, our time is 7.12 p.m. 
The way the order is going to go is, as we've uh, announced multiple times, Articles 40 to 45 will be heard first. Then we will return to Article 31. Then we will go to Articles 34 to 39. That will be the order that we're going to be doing things in. I am going to let everybody know that as a result of some of the developments in the law and things that have happened, um, as moderator's discretion, I'm going to move Articles 40 and 41 to be reversed. We will be addressing Article 41 first, as that's a general bylaw, and then we will address 40, which is the zoning bylaw. So we're doing that procedurally just to um, accommodate what the AG is currently ruling on and, and all of that. We'll address that when we get to them. But I want everybody to know that we will address Article 41 first. I've just been informed that we have 373 voters, in, uh, and that was at 7.09 p.m. It's very exciting. <laughs> and at this time, Chief Splain uh, I had already approached me about making a motion to amend. He's already presented it to me in writing. The clerk has it. So, Chief, if you can address um, the floor. Please state your name. Uh, Chief Morris Splain. Um, I want to uh, move to amend the opening motion to add Joanna Boudreau to the list of non-residents that are allowed to address the town meeting body. Uh, Joanna Boudreau is the animal control officer. She is not a resident. She has authored and uh, submitted bylaw changes that are included in the warrant. She is best able to answer questions relative to these articles. Second. Having a second on that, you all understand it's the annual control officer and it's, I believe, I was just looking very quickly on which article it would be. It will be article 35. She's moving that article. Um, so we have a second on that. So ladies and gentlemen, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. So you want to say we're going to 41? No, nope, 41 first. 41. Yep. Okay. Motion lay on the table. That's not going to be done, right? Oh, my God. Right. Yep. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving to Article 41. Mr. Cowing, if you could come forward, please. Mr. Cowing, whenever you're ready, um, you can move your article. Can everyone hear me okay? okay? David Cowing, 8 Mayflower Street. I move that the town vote to amend the Town of Kingston General Bylaws, Chapter 6, Public Peace and Safety, by removing Article 7, marijuana in its entirety and replacing with the following. Article 7, recreational marijuana establishments prohibited. Consistent with general laws, chapter 94G, subsection 3, section A, 2, marijuana establishments as defined in general laws, chapter 94G, subsection 1, as may be amended from time to time, shall be prohibited within the town of Kingston. Mr. Ram Cowing, will you accept a friendly amendment just so that everybody's clear that the general laws are read as General Law Chapter 94G, Section 3, Subsection A, Sub, and, uh, sub 2, and General Law Chapter 94G, Section 1. You accept that friendly amendment? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, do I have a second on that? Yes. Having a second on that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board have withheld their votes, and I'm assuming they will vote them. Um, sometime tonight, and if they do, if they've called for a public meet, an open meeting, they will let us know as the, as the meeting progresses. Um, Mr. Cowing, would you like to address your article? I would. In 2016 general election, over 7,000 Kingston residents turned out to the polls, and the majority voted against recreational marijuana in Massachusetts. At last year's town meeting, the town brought forward articles to put a ban in place on public consumption and also 
on the establishments that would grow, produce, and sell marijuana in Kingston. Unfortunately, those gathered at town meeting were unable to actually vote on that article due to an amendment and the confusion that followed. This article, which I am presenting tonight, in combination with article number 40, will give the residents of Kingston gathered here the chance to actually vote for and implement that ban consistent with the wishes of the town as demonstrated in 2016. Yes, marijuana has been legalized and is here in Massachusetts to stay, but retail and production don't have to be here in Kingston. Several nearby towns that had a majority of voters against legalization currently have bans in place. That list includes the towns you would expect, Duxbury, Pembroke, Hingham, and I just heard tonight that Hanson um, banned retail marijuana in their town last night at town meeting. Um, there are also some towns you would not expect, like Braintree and Weymouth. They sent a message to their communities that even though it is legal and would increase tax revenue, they respect the will of their residents and are taking an appropriate amount of caution. I urge you all to do the same. Looking to Colorado, which legalized in 2014, I was somewhat surprised to find that they actually have 69% of their municipalities with some sort of ban in place on retail, grow, and or production of marijuana. A ban on recreational marijuana establishments in town is not a knee-jerk reaction out of fear of a misunderstood plant. A ban is recognition that this is an intoxicating substance that needs to be treated with an appropriate level of caution. A ban places no burden upon any Kingston resident who may wish to purchase a marijuana product other than driving a few extra minutes to a neighboring town. A ban in Kingston is also not a condemnation on anyone who has, does, or plans to use marijuana responsibly in the privacy of their own home. However, as with alcohol and any other substance, it isn't the responsible users that create the problems the rest of us have to deal with. Also, to be clear, I'm not saying that these business owners are trying to intentionally harm our, com our community. Their priorities just differ from ours. The top priority for a business is a return on investment, not the well-being of the surrounding neighborhoods and community. I'll go ahead and save some of the trouble who's going to get up here and debate after this. The most popular deflection for any debate on marijuana. Yes, of course, alcohol is bad. It's caused way more damage to our community than marijuana. And why? Well, it's been completely normalized and is available everywhere. It's in almost every home, served in nearly every restaurant, and is sold in eight different retail locations in Kingston alone. However, just because alcohol is everywhere and causes so much harm, that doesn't mean we should give marijuana the same opportunity. Also, I completely understand that these stores will be secure, require ID, only sell to adults that are over 21, and be way more expensive than anyone's regular dealer. I don't think anyone actually expects retail stores to let kids come in, buy pot, and go make bad decisions. A more realistic assessment will be that having these stores will increase use within this community and normalize it. I don't know how the retail shops plan to actually stop diversion, but I do know that Percocet, Oxycodone, Vicodin, and Fentanyl required a doctor's prescription, were obtained from a registered pharmacist at a licensed pharmacy, required a photo ID and a signature, and we all know how easily those painkillers ended up in the wrong hands. Normalizing and making this or any substance more available by having retail and production in town is demonstrating some ignorance of major factors that contributed to the opioid crisis. As a paramedic and a firefighter in a community that has been significantly impacted by that crisis, I have seen firsthand the effects. I'm sure many of you in this room have been affected by this, or certainly know someone who has. I myself have two cousins that were nearly lost. One is clean and doing great, and the other is still struggling. Obviously, the stakes with opiates are infinitely higher, and the cost dramatically greater than marijuana, but I believe the lessons learned should not be overlooked so the town can try to raise some revenue by investing in this industry. I would argue that an investment in the marijuana industry is an unnecessary risk to this community, both socially and economically. Sure, all signs point to the fact that if we allow these facilities to open, we would have an influx of cash on hand, but this investment leaves us with more questions than answers, like how much revenue exactly, for how long, and at what cost, both in dollar amount and social cost. How much more spending will the town do with that extra cash? What happens when that revenue decreases over time? 
Do people in the room realize that after five years, the tax revenue Kingston receives from a retail store drops from 6% to 3% of gross sales? Do taxes go up even more than if we never had that influx? We also can't forget the product we are talking about is still federally illegal. If you purchase mar marijuana legally in Massachusetts and cross state lines, you just committed a felony under federal law. Take any business in Massachusetts that legally grows, produces, distributes, and sells marijuana under state law, that same business under federal law basically falls into the same category as a drug cartel. Now I understand this is an extreme comparison, but the point I'm trying to make is that the rules and regulations at the federal, state, and local levels have not yet caught up to the point where we are at integrating this industry into our community. Also, the fact that the retail stores are cash only should be a strong indicator that this is not the right way to build a strong commercial base in our town. To be clear, these stores are cash only because the bank will not take their money for fear of it being frozen or seized by the federal government. Let me say that again, the banks won't take their money. My bank, your bank, almost any bank in the state will not do business with the marijuana industry. If it is truly a good idea to invest in marijuana, it will still be a good idea years down the road when these questions have answers and the laws have caught up. If it turns out to be more trouble than it's worth, we will have saved ourselves the headache. A yes vote on this article will save us that trouble and protect our community. Also, a public service announcement, do not leave the auditorium until after all these articles have been heard. If the ban does not pass, there will be opportunity to create a buffer zone and keep these stores away from our neighborhood later on. Thank you. All right, come on. Thank you, Mr. Cowie. Uh, Mr. Randall, and I'm aware, are you going to move what you're going to ask? Yes, uh, okay. Bradford Randall, consultant for Elevated Roots. I'd like to cede my two minutes to Mr. Diagostino, who's on the opening motion. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Randall had reached out to me um, prior to to indicate that what he was going to seek, and I'm going to put it to a vote to all of you to make this decision. That is whether or not he can cede his two minutes to Mr. Diagostino from Elevated Roots in order to speak, um, I'm assuming, in opposition to the motion. Uh, so I'm going to take a vote right now. I'm not going to debate it. Just whether or not you want Mr. Um, Randall's two minutes to be ceded to Mr. Diagostino. Same time frame, same everything. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. I'm going to call that a no. So uh, Mr. Randall, though, you certainly still have your two minutes. You can use it now. You can use it later. I'll use it now. Certainly. So we're here before town meeting discussing a possible ban on retail marijuana in Kingston. What does this ban accomplish? This ban would stop all legal marijuana businesses from being able to open in Kingston. Retailers, cultivators, product manufacturers, testing labs, research facilities. In an article presented by the Boston Globe on February 2, 2019, written by Naomi Martin, the Globe sought out information related to the impacts of the legal marijuana market on the illicit marijuana market. State officials say the shrinking illicit market is a top priority. It undermines tax revenues, hurts legitimate businesses, and supplies kids with marijuana. Quote, we want to make sure that this law is having the effect it was intended to have, which is to reduce the illicit market, said Cannabis Control Commissioner Brett McBride. It's the ball game. We have heard concerns about citizens uh, worried about children vaping in high schools and vaping marijuana. That is a fair and legitimate concern. However, here the town of Kingston has a chance to pick their partner. Marijuana is here in Kingston. It has been here and it will be here. However, the data shows that when we allow marijuana shops to open in our communities, in our states, the illicit market shrinks. And it has similar effect that alcohol has had. It's hard for children to get alcohol. It's easy for children to get marijuana. So my question would be this. As the town of Kingston, would you want to pick your partner tonight? God forbid one of your children gets a hold of marijuana product from a marijuana retailer. Would you rather it be from Joe Smo on the street where it's not tested, it's not regulated, it's not dose controlled? Or God forbid it comes from us where it is tested, 
where it is regulated, where it is dose control. I ask you to stay for the entirety of this town meeting. Uh, there is a series of articles that are very important. They will impact the industry by doing bans through zoning. Mr. Randall, wrap it up. Yes. Thank you. So I'd appreciate your consideration tonight, uh, not, not just on behalf of Elevated Roots, but on behalf of another client, a cultivator, which hopes to bring jobs to this community to keep our young people here, to give them a future in Kingston. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Um, I believe, sir. Actually, I, Madam Moderator, could we hear from Mr. Fonts first, please? I'm calling on you, so Certainly you can either Madam, speak or not. Yes, I'd I went, I, for, in fact, I was going to call on uh, the woman asked, behind you, me. so you kind of went in front of her, so I wasn't sure. I don't really care if somebody caught. Jean Coleman, 20 Thank Hollins you. Lane, I'd like to move the question. Uh, Ms. Coleman, I'm not going to let that happen. This is too early in the debate, but okay. come back in a few, little while. <laughs> Madam Moderator, yep. um, people of Kingston, thanks for coming out tonight. This is a, uh, this is a troubling topic for many folks. You need folks. to state your name first. My name is Michael Martin, 18 okay. Prospect Court. Thank in, you. In 2012, this community learned firsthand the perils of what can happen when our children get a hold of marijuana. It was a time when we all looked back then as a community, when we saw what happened, we said never again, and we would do everything that we could to make sure our children weren't put in that position again. Yet here we are seven years later at the altar of saying that there's a little bit of income potentially involved for us, and it's the cost that we are looking for to sit there and consider this. I, some of you will think maybe we're going to save money. We're going to get income for this. I'll ask you, when you get a raise, how many times does that money get put aside and saved? The fact is the spending increases. I would suggest on a per capita person, you're not going to see a decrease in what you pay in taxes and the spending will adjust accordingly. But at what price? We will have this in our community and it will not come back. I'll remind this community that there are 600 housing units coming to Cordage Park, which will increase traffic coming north on top of the increased traffic that we've seen in all these establishments as they come in to create a log jam at exit 9. That'll back up to exit 10, which will experience us all then in that respect there. In terms of real estate, I would suggest the theory of substitution would apply. When you look to buy in a community, you sit there and look at its community and what's around. If you bring these establishments here, the first thing they see when they get off at exit 9 and exit 10, marijuana establishments. I suggest that you go up one exit further to, uh, up to Pembroke or to Duxbury, and you can have an adverse reflect on your own personal properties as, as things sell. I want you to pay attention tonight. I don't know who's going to speak, but I can almost guarantee you, you're not going to hear from first responders, police, fire, or EMTs that think this is a good, a good thing for Kingston and for our children. For all of these reasons, I'm going to ask you to support the ban on the marijuana in the town. Thank you, Mr. Martin. So my ladies and gentlemen, let's keep it moving. Mr. Bonsack, I guess. Peter Bonsack, 33 Final States. Uh, I'd like to make an amendment to the motion to include, um, prohibit all liquor stores, all liquors in the town of Kingston. I can't accept that a motion to amend. It's not within the four corners of the article. Okay, well, I wasn't really going to go through with it. I kind of figured you weren't, yeah. but move on. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's legal. If it was illegal still, I would have a problem with it. But it is legal. It's not going to do anything different for your children. It's up to the parents to be able to take control and watch their children. I can guarantee you there are people in this room that have kids that are probably 14 years or older, are smoking pot right now, and you have no idea that they're doing it. As far as having a, uh, uh, a, a, an establishment that's going to sell, um, sell it legally, I don't think that's going to deter any um, people who are selling the pot right now, saying that it's tested and by the state and it's going to pass this. Marijuana has been around for many, many, many years, and nobody's died from it, okay? So the, the pot's not going to change. Yes, it's more potent than it used to be years ago. I used to smoke pot when I was a kid. I don't smoke it anymore, okay? So I'm saying it is what? Can Come you imagine on, that? Like I used I to smoke about pot. Respect. What's that? I wasn't yelling at you. I was yelling at all of them. Oh, okay. My hair is not that good. So either way, you know where good. it is legal, I, I don't see a problem with this. Everybody, every year when somebody ran for election, we need economic development. Well, you know what? You have a chance to do it. It's not going to affect your kids anymore. It's up to the parents 
to make sure. But they're not going to be going to a store, a standalone building, where you have to be 21 years old. There's not going to be any hanging around. They're going to still get it from the people on the street until they're 21. And the only people that are 20, 21 or older are going to be able to pay the price, because you know it's going to be enormous, that they're going to be people who actually work for, and make decent money. So I don't see a problem with this. I see it as a tax revenue. Be real. It's not going to change anything when it comes to our kids, because if it does, it's the parents' fault, not the people. Thank you. Um, I have right now queued up Ms. Um, uh, Mr. Font, Ms. Um, Wade, and then Mr. Caval. So, Mr. Font. John Michael Font, 16 May Avenue. Um, there are a lot of folks here tonight that are passionate on both sides of this issue. Um, I would just like to present to the body that this really, in my opinion, has nothing to do with how you feel about marijuana. This is about the impact on the community and how you think it's going to affect Kingston in general in many different aspects. Um, so I know there are a lot of people that are going to vote against it because they don't like marijuana. There are a lot of people that are going to vote for it because they do like marijuana. People vote for whatever reason they want. But I would argue that it really isn't about how you feel about marijuana. It's about how you feel about an establishment being in the town. One thing that concerns me is I was at one of the planning board meetings where this was being discussed, and one of the questions that was presented to the planning board was why they did not consider uh, having zoning for marijuana establishments in our in mixed industrial commercial area, which would be like up by the train station, by the mall, you know, kind of an area that's away from, from houses. And the response was that there were concerns for the security of these businesses because they're all cash businesses, and they thought that isolating them out in that area would subject them to uh, more criminality. So for me, I don't think anybody in this room that's for marijuana is for crime, right? So I don't think anybody in this room is for crime. So my thing is like, if they had concerns that these types of businesses may be subject to more criminality, I think we have to look at it from that standpoint. It's not about whether you hate or love marijuana, it's about how having the establishments in the town could affect the town in general. Um, so for me, I'm for the ban for that reason. I, I just, that, that's my position. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, Ms. Wade, sorry. Yes. Uh, Janet Wade, one snapping turtle lane in Kingston. And I am here representing the Board of Health in Kingston. And we were voted in by the townspeople of Kingston. I want to read a proposal that we put together and sent to the selectmen of the town. And we did due diligence on marijuana, looking at the advantages and the disadvantages. As members of the Board of Health for the town of Kingston, we propose that no facilities be licensed for the purpose of retail sale of marijuana products in Kingston. Our position comes from a review of the evidence-based research on marijuana use conducted by the National Council on Substance Abuse, the National Institutes of Health, and the Centers for Disease Control. Marijuana has harmful effects on the developing brain when use begins in adolescence and up until the mid-20s, especially with regular or heavy use. It's been linked to absenteeism, lower educational achievement, and school dropout rates with frequent or regular use. That's in grammar school, high school, college, and beyond. Several negative effects include difficulty thinking and problem solving, problems with memory and learning, impaired coordination, difficult ma difficulty maintaining attention, and impaired perception and motor skills. The potential can be consumed, this product can be consumed or inhaled in higher doses, resulting in even more serious side effects, including panic, paranoia, or acute psychosis which may be more common in new users or in those who have already have psychiatric disease. It also, the question has come up about, it's no worse than alcohol. Alcohol can be evaluated by inhalation. This cannot be addressed with marijuana until such time as there's a monitoring device that's been created. There's been a question about medicinal marijuana. Those in need of medicinal marijuana have area access to medical dispensaries located in Plymouth, Hanover, Bridgewater, Taunton, and Wareham. Uh, we also looked at 
uh, research that was done by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety and the American Journal of Public Health. Ms. Wade, I'll need states, you to start wrapping it up. Looking okay. at the states of Colorado, Washington, and Oregon, and found that since uh, marijuana use was initiated, there was a 3% increase in car collisions. So um, we would ask that you respectfully consider the information that we've acquired. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Caval, you can use whichever one you want. Mr. Caval was in front of you. Oh, I queued him up. He didn't get up sorry. first. Uh, my name is Bill Caval. I'm on, on the health board about 18 years now. And I came to this town because it's quiet, beautiful, and nice. Now, we all voted on the health board against it, 100% against it. Uh, I know a lot of my friends, when we get out of Nam, smoked it, and all it did is put them in another world, didn't help them at all. I've had dozens of broken bones and everything else, and I'm not going to smoke marijuana. The doctor will tell me what to take. And I just uh, hope another big thing is uh, the town, something about 3% you're going to make on it. Well, California was supposed to make a billion dollars. They haven't figured out where it went yet. So where's 3% going to go? I know your taxes aren't going to go down. So I want you to think about that. 3% is nothing. If California can't figure out where a billion is for some selling this stuff, where are we going to be with 3%? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cabal. I believe Ms. Coleman, you were next queued? She was next, actually. She was in front of you? Okay. Yes. Ma'am? Hello, my name is Alyssa Cook from 43 Grove Street. Um, I am a mom, I'm a resident. I bought my house 10 years ago. Um, uh, Ma'am, you might not be aware of it. You're supposed to actually address it. Oh, me. I'm sorry. That's okay. You, I'm you sorry. didn't know. That's okay. Nope, this is my yeah. first town meeting, and I'm here Welcome. because this is Thank important to me. This Welcome. is very Thanks important to me. Um, these are great guys. Whether you believe it or not, this is important. I am college graduated. I, we went, we, I watched my mom go through anxiety and depression. I dealt with anxiety and depression. When I was in my 20s, I, we, I started using marijuana. I graduated college. I m moved ahead in my career. I bought my house. I had my kids. I don't get, it's, it's not about the stigma. It actually helps some people. Helps a lot of people greatly. And I'm not going to go into all that right now, but this is so important. You guys don't see what's coming. California's coming. Colorado's coming. This is local. They care about us. They care about our community. Take a listen to what these guys are doing. I talked to my neighbor the other day. She's 76. We bought our house 10 years ago. The only reason I got my house was because of this woman. We, be we befriended this woman and wrote a letter to our realtor. She was outside the other day talking to us and she is on the opposition. She, I changed her mind the other day. It helps a lot of people. Just think about that. I'm not going to go into full detail about that. I'm not trying to. But I, I want to move this along. And through you, Madam Moderator, I would like to ask the town council, based on recent land and court decisions, is there a risk that the Attorney General could approve that the zoning bylaw change to repeal existing zoning laws for marijuana establishments by general bylaw to prohibit marijuana establishments in the town would leave Kingston with the default setting of pot shops being able to legally operate in any zone? Well, we're not going to touch that one until the next article, right? Yeah. It's okay. right, now, yeah right now, we're talking about a general bylaw, not a zoning bylaw. So right now, this one's going to be the general bylaw. We will cover zoning and the impact of any of the votes once this one's voted. OK? OK. So. Uh, and I just one more thing I want to add to this. If anyone's worried about their, we, we, we saw a lot of debate last night. Um, house value is going down. Statistics show that your house value will You'll increase. You need to wrap it up now. OK. House values are going to increase. Look it up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jean Coleman. Hello. Oh, you're not quite Thank on. Thank you. Jean Coleman, 20 Hollins Lane. Let's try again to move the question, please. Can't 
Okay, at this folks, um, time, ladies and gentlemen, with there being um, close to 30 minutes of debate, just shy of it, I'm going to allow the motion to move the question at this time. So all those in favor of moving the question, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Motion carries with minimal opposition. So ladies and gentlemen, on Mr. Cohen's motion on Article 41, basically prohibit marijuana. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Let's just count it. Yelling doesn't always help folks, you know, but. <laughs> but it'll be what it is. Um, my tell is you're all set and ready. All those in favor of the motion on Article 41, prohibiting marijuana, blue in the sky. I mean, blue up. <laughs> blue in the sky. I was just thinking the other one. You can all put down your cards now. Thank you. Mr. Pepe, I know you had the hottest of the jobs. Mr. Basler, what's your vote? 79. Mr. Basler, 79. Mr. Pepe? Aye. Mr. Pepe is 96. Mr. Armstrong? 67. 67. Ladies and gentlemen, all those in opposition to Article 41, Prohibition Against Marijuana, blue cards in the air. Stop talking, he's counting, folks. Yeah, what? Why do you have a different color card? We may have run out. We may have run out. Let me just we check ran this. Out. Yep, we ran out. Green and blue tonight. Green and blue, okay. Thank you for finding that. All right, I'm sorry to say it then. Um, there wasn't anybody with a green card that didn't put it up for the first vote. No, 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 I know, but I'm just making sure that somebody didn't have a green card and didn't think they couldn't vote. All right, so everybody, nobody's saying they did, couldn't vote when on the yes side of Article 41. Okay, so we're counting the no votes, green and blue cards in the air. Dave's going to start again. Mr. Armstrong's going to start again. Paul, do you think you need to start again? All right, so you section over there, up again. This is the no vote. This is Article 41, no, against prohibition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the old days, yeah. I'm going to have you address me tomorrow, too. Okay. Um, the difference in the vote. Mm -hmm. That the next will be a zoning bylaw. Yeah. Which is to repeal the existing bylaw. Mm -hmm. And then I will explain why I didn't know that motion. Uh, Mr. Basler. 57. Sorry. What was that? 57. Mr. Basler is 57. Mr. Pepe. 32. Mr. Pepe is 32. Uh, Mr. Armstrong. 44? 4-4. Ladies and gentlemen, Article 41 passes with 242 and can I call it? I have to call it or it's not legal.
Uh, motion carries on Article 41 with 242 in favor and 133 in opposition. Who made the motion to reconsider? I have a second on the motion to reconsider. Second on that. So ladies and gentlemen, on a motion to reconsider, a yes vote reopens debate. A no vote closes debate permanently. <coughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, all those in favor of the motion to reconsider, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Motion does not carry. All right. Now I'm going to go back and quad it. Huh? That was just on the motion to carry, yeah. not to carry. Yeah, I'm just saying you called it as you called it I said it did not carry. carry. Yes, yeah. on a voice count. Voice, voice yeah. On majority or? Majority. 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 Yeah, majority of voice count. Yeah. yeah. Hang on one second. Do you think we should now? Do you think that's an opposition to it? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have four more marijuana articles. I would not leave yet. Um, article, we're going to move on to Article 40, Mr. Cowing, if you can come forward again, thank you. Um, I'm going to have town council explain what somebody raised, because I don't think all of you attended, well, you weren't at the meeting I went to, so, um, about what's going on now. So right now, there's an abolishment of marijuana by general bylaw. There's case law that's come down that council's going to explain, that explains that the zoning bylaw now, which the article that's going to be going forward is to repeal the permission of uh, marijuana under the zoning bylaw. So that's what council is going to explain. Sure. So um, there is a case that came down from the land court recently in March. It's called Valley Green Grow. In any event, in that case, um, the town of Charlton had passed a comprehensive zoning bylaw to regulate marijuana uses in the town. And subsequent to that town meeting, there were two petitioned articles, one for a zoning amendment to essentially repeal and one for a general bylaw um, to prohibit. In that case, the zoning bylaw failed by, because taking, taking a step back, a zoning bylaw requires a two thirds majority. So that particular bylaw amendment did not pass and the general bylaw did pass, so the general bylaw to prohibit. And what that court decided, Judge Foster decided, was that if you have a comprehensive zoning regulation, you can't regulate or specifically prohibit that type of use through a general bylaw amendment because to amend a zoning bylaw number one, the quantum of vote is different, but it also has further protections in that you have to advertise a public hearing of the planning board, the planning board has to consider it, report to the town meeting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, since that time, the attorney general has issued a decision in a Brewster case under similar facts, um, where the attorney general actually disapproved the general bylaw. So what's quite clear from those cases, and I again, I caution you, it's just a land court case, um, not to minimize that, but it's subject to appeal. It's my understanding that case is only at the summary judgment stage, so it's still sitting in the lower courts, and it could be appealed at a later date. And we could see um, what happens in that circumstance, but of course you have to make a decision tonight as opposed to um, once the appeals court takes it up, if it does. So what seems to be clear from that case is, and from the Attorney General's decision, is that if the town were not able to repeal this zoning bylaw uh, pursuant to this current petitioned Article 40, um, the general bylaw would likely be stricken. Now, the other problem with that case is that it wasn't limited to those specific facts where you had a general bylaw and a zoning bylaw in conflict. The judge, the judge made a broader decision and said that if you have a history of zoning bylaws to regulate this type of use, a general bylaw couldn't serve to prohibit. So there still is a risk, and it hasn't been decided 
expressly by the Attorney General, but there is a risk that the zoning, uh, that the general bylaw prohibition may be stricken. So that's the only information I can provide you tonight. Obviously, a repeal of the zoning bylaw would could perhaps influence the Attorney General. Likely, she doesn't look at intent of the body, but rather what the case law says, but that could have an influence on the Attorney General. If it doesn't have an influence on the Attorney General and the general bylaw is stricken, then you're left with no underlying zoning. So it's sort of a unclear position at this point, um, and there certainly could be litigative risk for the town in either event. I'm not sure if that helps. Yeah. So that, understanding that, ladies and that gentlemen, um, Mr. Cowing is going to be moving and um, amending his motion that you see in your article book. And part of this is because when Mr. Cowing made his article, which we can't amend at all, when he made his article, well, you can amend within the four corners, but anyhow, um, he made his motion, these cases came down afterwards. So part of what Mr. Cohen is going to be doing to accommodate and deal with the issues that town council is talking about is he's going to do it, just so that everybody can understand, he's going to do it as a contingency so that if, you know, he's going to move this to repeal, basically his article is to repeal, his motion is to repeal the zoning bylaw that pro, pro, that allows marijuana under specific provisions, um, permits and all that. He's going to make and move this to repeal it contingent upon the Attorney General accepting the general bylaw prohibition. So that will make it so that in the event that the general bylaw is not accepted by the AG's office, the town of Kingston won't be left with no zoning bylaw, which would mean marijuana and everything could be anywhere at any time, any, any place. So that's why, Mr. Cohen, this is so serious and important to him that he is um, going to do the contingency. So I, it's a little bit of a different, we are shaking things up a little, and you're gonna see that for the next four articles, but I just wanted to explain why when you hear what he's gonna say, why he's doing it this way now. All right, so everybody understands legally why we're proceeding. And with that said, Mr. Cohen, you can move. <laughs> this is Mr. Cohen's first time ever moving anything at town meeting, and he's certainly getting his... Um... And I can't dumb it down any better than that, sorry. <laughs> Peter Blonsek, 33 Final States, where he is uh, amending it, do we not have to vote on it first? No, because he's moving it in first order. He's okay. not amending his, um, he's not amending his motion because he's making it for the first time. Okay. So if he had moved it and then was going to amend it, then it would require a vote. But because he's able to move it right now, he can move it the way that he can move it. All right, thank you. Does that make you. sense? Yep. Yeah. Because he's moving it in the first instance, so to speak. You're all set? All right. <clears throat> I move that contingent upon the Attorney General's approval of Article 41 that the town vote to delete in its entirety Section 4.21 Marijuana Establishments from the Town of Kingston Zoning Bylaws. Having a second on that, um, ladies and gentlemen, again, Board of Selectmen and Planning Board. Um, have not voted on this, um, and will let us know if they vote during the um, pendency of debate. Um, and just as a reminder, this is a two-third vote requirement. Mr. Cohen, if you can address your motion. Certainly. This article is the zoning component of a ban on marijuana establishments in the town of Kingston. If you read the town's zoning bylaws at the beginning, under purpose, you'll see reference to the mission of those bylaws to protect the town's health and safety. Similarly, if you read the zoning prohibition on marijuana establishments in the town of Duxbury, it states its intent for their ban. What it states is that while voters in Massachusetts legalized marijuana in 2016, the town of Duxbury, similar to Kingston, did not support that referendum. Additionally, they state that the personal use of marijuana raises planning and public safety issues, such as, but not exclusively, a lack of specific measure to define toxic levels of marijuana use and determine impaired driving limits, which are not consistent with the purpose of the zoning bylaws, 
which is to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of all inhabitants of the town. Looking to Colorado once again, we can see that legalization was not the end of the world. However, there have been some troubling public health statistics that have come out of there five years later. In Colorado, the medical use of marijuana became, became widespread in 2009. Legalization took place in 2012, and in 2014, adult use was authorized. Last month, in the Annals of Internal Medicine, they published the findings of a study done in the ER of a busy Colorado hospital from 2012 to 2016. Over that period of time, visits for cannabis-related emergencies tripled. Nearly 10,000 visits to the ER for those emergencies were documented and analyzed. Averaged out over four years, that's six a day, and that's pretty significant for one emergency room. Of those 10,000 visits, 10% 10 were related to the use of edibles, even though they only accounted for roughly one-third of 1% 1 of all sales during that time period. Of those seen in the ER who had used edibles, 48% were diagnosed as intoxicated. 18% were suffering from acute psychiatric emergencies, and 8% had cardiovascular symptoms. It was also noted in this study that young children have been increasingly exposed to marijuana through accidental ingestion of edibles, such as gummies, candies, cookies, etc. In a large pediatric hospital in Colorado, they saw zero pediatric patients between 2005 and 2009 for accidental ingestion. Following the rollout of widespread medical marijuana availability in 2009, there was an increase in the number of pediatric patients seen for those ingestions. And currently, they see several per month, a number of which wind up in intensive care. Contrary to popular misconception and social media posts and statements in this room, this study demonstrates it is possible to overdose on marijuana, and it is becoming increasingly more frequent as availability and potency increases and use becomes more normalized. You can ask anyone in public safety, police or fire, and they will tell you, yes, alcohol is still bad. And yes, they deal with alcohol-related calls for service daily, but they will also tell you that there has been an uptick in the number of marijuana-related calls for service as well. Impaired driving has been a huge problem, and I have seen this frequently in my own experience. We've even had parents bring their kids to the fire station where I work after they consumed edibles. Drivers are falling asleep behind the wheel, crashing, being stopped for erratic operation. Police then call out fire and EMS, who evaluates the driver and typically transports to the hospital, still not necessarily knowing what they are on or how much they have taken. Often they are misusing or overusing prescription drugs, but increasingly they are using edibles or marijuana as being found in the car. Those drivers are a danger to anyone who is on the road, and there is no breathalyzer type device that can determine what they are on and gauge the intoxication level of those drivers. Again, looking to Colorado, they have seen a dramatic increase in the number of fatal traffic accidents where drivers have tested positive for marijuana since 2013, more than doubling during that period of time. This fact, in combination with the results of the study that I referenced, indicate a conflict with the purpose of zoning bylaws a yes vote on this article is a vote to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of all the inhabitants of the town of Kingston. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Um, I have Ms. Fiore and then I have Mr. Randall. I just want to make sure I understand what a favorable and unfavorable vote means. Since this article is contingent on Article 41, a favorable vote means the Attorney General accepted our um, ban from the general bylaw. That's correct. Oh, yeah, in that sense, yes. Okay. An unfavorable vote means the Attorney General did not accept our ban on... No. The no, no. They have nothing to do with it that way. <clears throat> okay. A, so a favorable vote means the bylaw was repealed. So there is no existing zoning bylaw in the town of Kingston right. regarding marijuana. But so yeah. if the attorney general accepts 41, then that stands, and there's no zoning bylaw in the town of Kingston. Okay, so if that is a ban now, and then that's a pure ban. A no vote means that you want to keep the zoning bylaws that will supersede the general bylaw. 
the, the, reason, the reason I phrased it that way is because what we're deciding tonight is based on how the Attorney General rules. Yes and no. We're voting tonight as a town meeting body. We need to vote as a town meeting body on what we want to do. No, so I, do you want to repeal the zoning bylaw or not? Mr. Cowing is just making it conditional upon the acceptance of Foddy so that he doesn't end up in a situation where he's repealed the zoning bylaw and then the AG throws out the prohibition. That's right. That's it. Does that make sense? No. No? no. See, that's the... If the zoning by right now, the zoning bylaw, I mean the general bylaw has passed. That means yeah. there's a prohibition against marijuana in the town of Kingston. Unless okay. the attorney general says No, 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 that. let's not get there okay. yet. The next, to the vote on this article is to repeal the zoning bylaw that permits marijuana with specific conditions, zoning conditions. So that's what he's repealing, okay? Yep. The reason he made it contingent is if the, um, if the um, AG doesn't accept 41, but it will probably more so have to do with this article, then that would mean that we would have no zoning bylaws in the town of Kingston. Because That's why he made it contingent. Again, Otherwise, he'd just vote it without the contingency. You have again, to tell them you're going to speak. Oh, oh. You're off normally. Oh, I'm normally off. Yeah. I didn't know that. Turn her on. <laughs> <laughs> now try. Okay. Yep. <laughs> because, again, based on this land court case and a decision recently issued by the Attorney General, she disapproved so every time just just taking a step back every time the town makes a bylaw amendment whether it be general or zoning the clerk submits it to the AG and the AG decides whether or not it's legal and it's based on case law and the Brewster case she looked at the decision Judge Foster made in Valley Grow which stood for the proposition that once you walk down the path of zoning and regulate marijuana uses via zoning as opposed to a general bylaw, you have to continue to walk down that path. And the only way to prohibit marijuana once you've zoned for it is through a zoning bylaw amendment as opposed to a general bylaw amendment because a zoning bylaw amendment has all these other prophylactic measures to ensure that you're respecting the resident's wishes. It's got a two-thirds majority. It's not just a 50-50 like we just had. It's a two-thirds majority that's required. It has a planning board hearing. Um, an advertisement for that planning board hearing. You have to advertise twice. Um, the planning board submits a report. So it's just a different mechanism to regulate a use. And the one thing that remains not wholly crystal clear mm -hmm. is whether or not the attorney general would consider, because remember, the way this zoning bylaw is worded is not to say to prohibit marijuana uses, but instead it says to repeal the zoning of marijuana uses. So to some people that could mean a prohibition. To other people, a repeal so that there's no underlying zoning could mean I actually don't want to regulate marijuana through zoning and I want to allow it wherever, for example, marijuana retailers, I want to allow that wherever I allow my other retailers like the toy stores. They, so I've had communities that say, I don't want to prohibit, I don't want to regulate through zoning, I'm just going to let marijuana come and be cited wherever other businesses are cited. So that's a, a legitimate So by proposal. making this one contingent on that one, it's basically sending the message that this is intended to repeal, not just to allow marijuana everywhere, it's intended to repeal. Because that also comes, Mr. Cowing actually wanted and came to me ahead of time to move to amend this article to allow and change his language to add prohibition. Unfortunately, I had to rule against that being allowed to go forward because I'm bound by the four corners of the article. The article was presented to the planning board and it's to repeal the zoning bylaw, not add a zoning bylaw or prohibition. So would it have solved our problems? Sure. But I, I can't just rule on things to solve problems. I have to rule on them so that they're done legitimately, which is the four corners. That's why he's making it contingent. Okay. If I had allowed his motion to amend to prohibit, it would be crystal clear. And okay. so, so to be one, one, I'm sorry, Elaine, to be one last 
clarification. So the intention of this, uh, making this motion contingent is twofold. To number one, protect against the fact of the, against the possibility that if in the event the AG says, no, that general bylaw prohibition is ineffective and I'm not approving it, it still leaves then the underlying zoning because she won't, you won't have, this body will not have passed the zoning bylaw amendment. So that's number one. Number two, the purpose is to let the AG know that if in the event we get a two-thirds majority, say that was the public's real intention here to pull off a prohibition, and if it wasn't as clean as we would have liked, at least we understand they've reached their two-thirds majority, whereas in the other cases they hadn't reached that. But that's not any, mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination a guarantee at all. But the vote is still straightforward. A yes vote repeals the zoning bylaw, and then that would align with the first one with the prohibition. A no vote leaves the zoning bylaw in place, which allows marijuana. So I don't want anybody to be confused about those, and I'll call that out again when we get to the point of voting. Uh, Mr. Randall. Brad Randall, consultant with Elevated Roots. So not only did the prior article vote to ban marijuana establishments, we also voted to remove the penalty for public consumption. So literally, you could walk down a sidewalk now in Kingston and not get fined for smoking marijuana. Um, there has been some misinformation heard tonight. Uh, and first of all, I want to point out that so the, there's a 6% tax that's coming to Kingston from these businesses if you adopt the 3% tax at the end of the meeting. Um, and the point of legalizing marijuana is to reduce the illicit market. So in Colorado, uh, where marijuana is legal, it can be legally bought, 33% of all marijuana sales are illicit market. That means 66% are legal. And this year, that was last year, this year it's 34%, so it's hanging in the 30s. Massachusetts last year, 89% of marijuana sales were illegal. Now we have a few stores open, 76% of marijuana sales are illegal. So it's going in that direction. Uh, there's a lot of talk about protecting people. I would submit, and not in a disrespectful fashion whatsoever, uh, that the people who sell these drugs illicitly would have something to gain from having marijuana be prohibited in Kingston. So I would ask everyone who's in favor of these marijuana establishments to vote no on this particular article. Uh, if everyone stays, keeps their vote the same, uh, this will not have the two-thirds needed to go forward. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Um, I do want town council to address one thing that you did mention. Um, so if you can do that at the very beginning about public consumption. So just to be super clear, yes, that was a repeal of the entire, um, I think it's called public safety and peace section of the bylaw, which did include a prohibition on public consumption. but. Uh, under state law, it's still prohibited to consume marijuana in, in public places, on the streets, et cetera. So you wouldn't have a bylaw fine for enforcement, but it is still illegal, so please don't. But it did the penalty. <laughs> yes, it did. It removed the penalty for public consumption, That's, but it still yeah. will be illegal in the town of Kingston to consume okay. marijuana in public. Yep. Yeah, but without our local penalties, right. Uh, Mr. Bonsack. Peter Bonsack, 3-3 final states. You know, the statistics you just heard from Colorado uh, has been, since it's been legalized, you don't know about any of the statistics prior to the, illegal, uh, to, to, prior to the legalization. So to say that it has gone up, they really don't know that, okay? Either way, it's pretty stupid to be driving impaired, whether you're alcohol or marijuana. But what I'd like to say, if you people want um, this to fail, it needs a two-third vote. And with the amounts that we had last time, there was 375 people, and if nobody else came in, they will not get two-third votes. You need 250 to pass. They had 242. Have at it. Thank you, Mr. Bonsack. Um, all right, sir. 
Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Patrick Dacey, 15 Brightside Ave. Uh, I'd like to applaud uh, my neighbor and colleague, Mr. Cowing, and just reiterate something that I had mentioned at the planning board meeting. Um, we had sort of a practice crisis um, similar to what we'd have if Route 3A were choked off by these establishments. Within the past two weeks, there was a serious motor vehicle accident that closed Route 3A for four hours and knocked out power. And yesterday, uh, with the traffic diversion from the construction between, uh, let's see, 3A, traffic was diverted both up Prospect and Brightside. And there was a head-on collision as a result of that traffic being rerouted up my street. Um, it's not a fair jump or a far jump to visualize what's going to happen if we have one or two uh, marijuana establishments basically bisecting the town and choking off traffic. Also, uh, again, Dave gave a lot of uh, statistics that can be backed up. I'd just like to add that a lot of people say that alcohol and marijuana are the same thing. They are not. Marijuana is a hallucinogenic. I just like that for the record. <laughs> All we right, can keep laugh. Going. We can laugh, okay? But it's a fact. It has a different effect on the human body. And I am a critical care paramedic. I've seen this, all right? Finally, to protect the health, safety, and general welfare of a community, right now, without this product in our town, we have traffic congestion, we have problems. They will be compounded, all right? I myself do support the medical use of this product for a certain population but the recreational use of this product is an entirely different creature. Thank you. Thank you. I have you all queued up. Sir? Peter Baird, 109 Summer Street. We had some statistics given uh, shortly yeah. ago um, regarding an in increase of um, accidents uh, purportedly to come from uh, or associated with the legalization of use of marijuana in Colorado. Um, I wanted to point out that nationwide, one of the major issues that we're dealing with is opiate addiction and, a, and an opiate crisis. And what's been found in the 13 states that have legalized uh, use of marijuana, uh, that there has been a 33% uh, decrease in opiate deaths. So right, this is on. not enough. Anything, any substance can have negatives, but it can also have positives. And across the, the, the country, states are voting to legalize marijuana because of the positive aspects. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Beard. Um, oh, sorry. You were, yeah, ma'am. Name? You? Madam, yep. Madam, apologies. That's I okay. thought you were going that no, way. No, 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 to you. <laughs> Tina Studley, 22 Riverside Drive. Yep. As far as impacting the community, I'd like to remind you, pot shops are so temporary. There are only 13 states with legalized pot. Once at least half the states legalize, the feds will most definitely legalize. They will not leave this tax revenue on the table. Joints will be sold with your cigarettes and liquor. This argument to me today is so pointless because in the next 10 years, it'll just be everywhere. To bring up opiates in this discussion is bizarre to me. The fact is more than half of addicts that are in recovery are doing well due to the use of marijuana. When uh, former residents spoke about um, kids getting into the gummy bears and ODing, what I'd like people to take away from what he was saying, the fact that those children survived. They're alive. If it was fentanyl, they'd be dead. Please vote no. Thank you. All right, come on, Phil, let's get through it without the um, applause or whatever. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, Mr. Randall, senior. Uh, Dennis Randall, 39 Winter Street. Um, 
As a community, this is, a, this is obviously um, a meeting and an issue of a tremendous interest to the town of Kingston. That's why we have this kind of attendance. I don't want fear to drive our decision. Fear is the father of all lies. That which we don't understand, that which we fear, we tend to tell lies about and not see it in its entirety. Yeah, the use of any illegal substance or uncontrolled substance is, is by underage is not desirable. But what we do know is education that comes from the so-called normalization. The education that, yeah, you don't start consuming stuff that you don't know. When you start knowing people um, that, my, for example, my wife has had knee replacement surgery. This has been very useful to control pain. As far as the presence of marijuana within our community under the existing laws of the Commonwealth, any adult may grow up to six plants, any household up to 12 plants. It is already here, it is abundant, and as more and more people begin to grow their own, less and less are going to the cartel kind of markets where you find the fentanyl and you find the other stuff on the wholesale list, as we legalize, we are drying up and eliminating gradually the illegal market. That will always exist. It existed long before. But understand this as a community. I would like us to think carefully and long and hard about how we position ourselves for the future. The proponents coming before us for stores, at least one has deep roots in Kingston, has uh, has a commitment to this town that has been demonstrated uh, through their action. We're looking for responsible establishments. And Mr. The, Randall, you have to wrap it up. Okay. Not vote fear, vote the future in a positive way. Education is the way that we can be safe. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Um, I believe it's you now, or Mr. Fong, okay. Um, Jared Krukowski from 65 Hollins Lane. I'd like to move the question. All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, we have a move the question. Uh, David Fuller, 233 Country Club Way. Could we get the selectmen's vote, please, before we vote? Thank you. Certainly. Um, has the Board of Selectmen taken a vote? They have not voted. We don't need that. We don't need that public. No, we don't. No. So they can, if they choose to do that while we're calling the question, they can choose to do that. Um, but um, at this point, ladies and gentlemen, move the question. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed. No. Motion carries. Majority vote. Voice count. <laughs> no, now my mic is on. <laughs> oh, now you <laughs> to hear you laugh. Is that the room? The case. Okay, the ladies case. and gentlemen, the Board of Selectmen have voted, and their vote is. One, one, three. That would mean one in favor, one in no, and three abstentions. Okay. Enough! Enough, really. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I call for a card count immediately. Um, it's a two-third vote. I want one question. Yeah, you have a point of order. I, I know you've explained it a couple of times, but I just want to be crystal clear. If, I'm going to that right now. Okay. So yep. to, I'm doing that right explain now. explain that we may be left with no zoning, which could uh -huh. be very dangerous. That's not what we're going to ever be left with, so I want to make okay. sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. So there was questions, and I want to make sure. Does everybody understand what town council explained? Yes. 
All right, so you understand that because this is contingent upon the acceptance of the prohibition of um, marijuana, that will not mean that we're left with no zoning. It will repeal the zoning, but there'll be a prohibition against zoning, I mean against marijuana. So the, a yes vote is to repeal it, and it would be conditional upon the AG accepting the prohibition under the general bylaw. The no vote means leave it in place, and then the general bylaw will prohibit, zoning bylaw will be in conflict, and then that becomes the zoning bylaw supersedes, okay? Yes vote repeals it, right? A no vote leaves it in place, and that's where we're at. Everybody get that? Yes. Okay, we just wanna make sure everybody understands the two. Mary, did that answer your question? Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna take a vote. So all those with blue and green cards that are in favor of Article 40, which is to repeal the zoning bylaw contingent upon the AG's acceptance of the prohibition bylaw. In the air, please. They're standing in the back, and I don't think yeah, he's going to see them. I don't want to interrupt him. No, I don't know, think he did. Mr. Pepe, I need to inquire whether or not you got the people in your section that are by the cameramen on that side. I got the people on the camera on that side. All right, did you? All right, so you and Paul, I, you and Mr. Basil already arranged that. Correct, yeah. I just wanted to make sure, because I, I would prefer to people to sit down when votes are called, or at least stand in the back row so that there isn't going to be confusion on votes. Uh, Mr. Basil. 94. Mr. Basil is 94. Mr. Pepe. Mr. Pepe is 94. Mr. Armstrong. 6'3". Six, three. Six, three. Ladies and gentlemen, all those in opposition to the motion to repeal the zoning bylaw, blue or green card in the air. Mr. Basler. 5'4. Mr. Basler is 5'4. Mr. Pepe. 36. Mr. Pepe is 36. Oops. Mr. Armstrong. 49. 49. 49. Doesn't pass. Let me just re-add. No, it doesn't pass. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, with 390 people total votes, the motion does not carry. With 251 in favor and 139 in opposition, in order to carry, it required 260. Second. That, please, Madam Moderator. Pardon can, me? Can you repeat the numbers, please? Certainly. The total number of votes was 390. Okay. There was 251 in favor, 139 in opposition, equals the 390. To get a two-thirds vote, it required 260 votes. 
So it was nine votes shy. Nine votes shy. Okay. Nine votes shy. So it fails. I have a, it fails, yeah. It does not carry. I have a motion to reconsider. I believe that was Mr. Beard. Okay, great. Thank you. That having a second. Ladies and gentlemen, a motion to reconsider would allow the reopening of the debate um, for further debate and further vote. A no vote is to close debate and no further debate, no vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Unbelievable, I have to count a motion to reconsider. <laughs> Tellers, sorry, counting a motion to reconsider, which is a majority vote. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? All those in favor of the motion to reconsider to reopen debate. Blue card in the air. The only, the only possibility would have been is if she, if it passed. And the only possibility for her to have accepted that position was if this one passed. Because then it would have shown that at least a couple of two years. Right. But, I mean, Mr. Basler. 83. Mr. Basler is 83. Mr. Pepe. 95. Mr. Pepe is 95. Mr. Armstrong, 63, right? All those in opposition to the motion to reconsider, blue and green cards in the air. Mr. Basler. 58. Mr. Basler is 58. Mr. Pepe. 36. 36. Mr. Armstrong. 47. 47. Ladies and gentlemen, the motion for reconsideration carries with 241 in favor, 141 in opposition. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, and the motion to reconsider. I would like new information only, all right? New information only. I'm being really clear. Thank you, Mr. Bonsack. Peter Bonsack, 335 Estates, move the question. Seriously? I can't. Um, sir? Yeah, Chris Blake, 32 Reed Street, Kingston. Um, because it's a reconsideration, it's just a simple majority at this time, correct? The, no. no, 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 no. Still two thirds. If the reconsideration was a majority vote, the vote on the article remains. That was two my thirds. question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, yes. Eric Crone, forty-three Longwood Circle. Um, so, when the state voted to legalize marijuana, this town voted against that. Last year when we had the ban, the majority of your voters here were against uh, marijuana shops, but we didn't have the two-thirds vote. Same thing tonight. But what I'm a little bit concerned about, and, and not to call anybody out, but I'm wondering why the Board of Selectmen or fin did, I, I'm not sure if Finance Committee voted. I don't think they did. I don't think they we don't. need nine votes. I think we need six, six point seven votes, if my math was, was correct. There's more than that up there. You guys we, are the we, leaders of the. You guys the are, well, wait, wait. No, 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 wait a minute. Mr. Crone. Sorry. Mr. Crone. 
the, whether the Board of Selectmen, whether any one votes is their personal decision on any uh, article. I know. I'm just saying that what they're they the leaders of the town. What they voted in their open meeting tonight as a Board of Selectmen was put on the table. So obviously it stated their positions. I'm, right. I'm just saying that they're the leaders of the town and, and it, I think it would be helpful if they voted. Thank you, Mr. Crown. One second, Kyle. There's a lot of people queued. Go. Hi, Shepard Long, 3 Grist Mill Lane. Um, I just want to clarify, I know you did a great job explaining it, but I believe in where I was sitting, there was still some confusion okay. as to what a yes vote w meant, and that some people were under the impression that a yes vote could leave us with no zoning. No, that And will in fact, not that is not the case. Correct. That Thank is you. not the case. A yes vote supports the prohibition that's it. Right. And it supports a prohibition. It will not leave us with no zoning. The only way, right, because it's contingent on the first bylaw pass. Correct. So a yes vote cannot leave us with no zoning. A yes vote will not leave us without zoning. That Correct. was what some people were scared of, and I appreciate think, that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Sir? Paul Sardella, 73 Ring Road. A few points I wanted to make tonight is regarding the businesses themselves. Earlier it was stated that no banks will accept the money is coming from these businesses, and they're cash businesses. And well, that's actually not true. Just so you understand, that was stated tonight, but banks in Massachusetts are taking marijuana money. Okay. Not all of them, by many means, but there are banks in Massachusetts that are taking marijuana money. Am I correct, though, in, in the assumption that it's their cash businesses, though, in Massachusetts? Well, that these are pr proposed I do not know. That might be a good question for Mr. D'Agostino. Is it cash or is, is your... They also accept that. Okay. Cash and debit cards. Okay. Um, and then, Thank so, you, Mr. D'Agostino. So to be clear, these revenue streams that people are considering are throwing out numbers of 6%. Who's monitoring that? Who's going to make be making sure that the town is, in fact, getting their revenue from these businesses accurately, um, not just proposed and what's being uh, said out there? The other po point I wanted to bring up, um, someone earlier had mentioned that these are local business owners, et cetera. I was at the community outreach meeting of one of these proposed establishments, and I asked about the financing of these businesses. Who's backing them up? Where are they getting the monies to lease multiple properties before they even have an established location? And there's, don't be fooled, people. Money's coming from Colorado, okay? Money's coming from out of the country, from Canada, from what I was told. There are investors in these uh, to these proposed establishments that aren't just from Massachusetts. So let's be real. The other part I wanted to bring up, you know, we're talking about there's no, uh, you know, methods or, or procedures in place right now for testing for uh, marijuana intoxication. I do a lot of traveling in my business with what I do, not just around Massachusetts, but even growing more and more uh, common, driving through Kingston. I'm almost probably two to three times a week behind someone smoking marijuana. You can smell it, it's a distinct smell. Not okay and we don't have ways to, to stop this and, and to test the sobriety for it. Let's, let's not move on this people, this is, it's crazy. And, all right, that's about all I have. Thank you. Yo, know, everyone consider that. <laughs> Sir, your name was Sarnell. Was it Mr. Sarnell? Sardella. Sardella. Thank you. Um, Mr. Randall. New information. Uh, Brad yes. Randall, consultant with Elevated Roots. So the question was asked, how are you going to be able to audit these businesses? Um, so marijuana companies in Massachusetts have seed to sale tracking. So that means from the point where the plant is a seed to when it's you know, all grown up as a flower, Every, everything that, every movement that that plant has is tracked by software. So you'd literally know if it goes into another room or whatnot. Um, I also want to present some new data for the body to consider. So this is from the Colorado Department of Public Health. And by the way, uh, Elevated Roots does not have money from Colorado coming to fund us. We are funded, I mean, our partners are all Massachusetts residents, and three of them are from Kingston. One is from Canton, and the other one is from Plymouth. Uh, so that said, according to a study conducted by the state of Colorado's Department of Public Health and Environment, there has been a decline in adolescent use. 
In 2017, Healthy Kids Colorado survey estimated 4.7% of high school students reported using marijuana daily or near daily, which is 20 or more times in the past 30 days. The percentage of high school students who reported using marijuana one to nine times in the past 30 days has remained stable since 2005. Remember, it's legal in Colorado. High school students who reported using 10 or more times in the past 30 days has declined since 2005. Specifically, high school students who reported using 40 or more times in the past 30 days peaked in 2009 at 6% and decreased to 3% in 2017. So while people are saying that uh, legalization of marijuana and these establishments will increase usage, I just want to remind the body that the data does not necessarily back that up. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Um, sir? Yeah, David Fuller, 233 Country Club Way. Um, I just want to make a comment that um, in regards to the last time I was up here asking for a vote, I am extremely disappointed in the board. All right, this is the most important issue to the public of this meeting. Okay, then. And for you to abstain is mind boggling. All right, we. Again, though, we, I made it very clear. Wait a minute, sir. I made it very clear that people have the right to vote in this room the way they choose to vote. They do. It's been current. I understand your view, but move on. Move on. Move on. All Thank right. you. I just want to say that you are the leaders of this community. All right? You, no, we, Somebody already we said elect it, you so to make the tough decisions. Okay? We elect you to make the tough decisions. All right. And if you can't make the tough decisions, then Who step down. Mr. Fawn already said it. Enough. Come on, folks. Mr. Font, new information. I'm not gonna talk about the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> uh, Joe Michael Font, 16 May Avenue. Um, we've heard a lot of reference to all sorts of different types of data here. Um, I think anyone here can tell that if you wanna go out and prove something on the internet, you can prove it, no matter what it is. If you approach something with a preconceived notion, you can find statistics and surveys and all sorts of stuff to support that. I'm the type of person that I value sitting down at the table with someone and actually talking with a person. And in part of the line of work that I do, um, I do provide services to the United States Department of State. And uh, we go all over the country, we meet with leaders in all sorts of different parts of government. And uh, I actually had the unique opportunity to sit down with uh, the first female district attorney out in uh, Denver, Colorado, actually. And ironically, one of the topics that came up was how legalization has affected their community. And I can tell you that she was absolutely crystal clear when she talked about not only traffic issues, accidents, things of that nature increasing, but also petty theft, things of that nature, crime in general, and particularly a huge problem that they're having out there is vagrancy. And she attributed all those increases to the legalization of marijuana in that region. So we can sit here in Massachusetts and speculate and pit, pit, uh, cherry pick different sets of data from Colorado. But as I said, I speak from my experience sitting down in the room with the people that are facing those issues firsthand and they were 100% crystal clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Font. Um, I have Mr. Pike. I just want to comment to the concern about whether or not the Finance Committee has voted. As five members of the Finance Committee that are here tonight, every one of us has in fact voted as residents and finance committee members on every single question that has come up tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pike. Hi, Jared Kukowski from 65 Hollands Lane. I just wanted to comment on a, a statement someone had made earlier about the origination of money that's supporting the, this industry as well as tracking that kind of material. I just wanted to point out that this is an actual body being looked at by the government. It's actual corporation as opposed to random people in their backyard or from another country. And that there's, a, there's metrics being looked at as to what's being put in this product. And so back to that in when you're thinking about how you want to vote. Thanks. Thank you. Sir? Uh, Damian Baird, uh, 109 Summer Street. I just wanted to point out briefly that um, a lot of the arguments I've been hearing tonight have been primarily addressing the merits of the legalization of marijuana and not the merits of the zoning bylaws or the bylaws governing the sale of marijuana. That's all I wanted to say. 
Thank you. And that was Mr. Be were you Beard? Yes. Thank you. I just want to make sure on the 109. Mr. Fawn, second time up. So do new information? Yep. I'd like to move the question, please. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to move the question. All those in favor of move, move, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> moving the question in order to actually again vote on, I've moved them now, so it's Article 40. All those that want to go to a vote, say yes. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. No, no, it was the sun. It was the sun too? Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, now on the reconsideration in the revote of Article 40. Again, it is a two thirds majority. We are revoting Article 40. So, I'm going to say again a yes vote will support the prior and prohibit and repeal our zoning bylaw, but will not leave us without a zoning bylaw. Just want to make that clear because of the contingency. Yeah, the two back there are the clerks. So, oh, oh. okay. John Michael, I need you to be on one side or the other. So I don't care if you stand in the back there, but you need to be on one side or the other. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, calling the vote. We're going to do it by a card count again. All those in favor of Article 41 to repeal the zoning bylaw and support the prohibition. 40, sorry. I know because I moved them. I'm out of Article 40. Thank you. Blue and green cards in the air. Mr. Basler. 97. Mr. Basler is 97. Mr. Pepe. 96. Mr. Pepe is 96. Mr. Armstrong. 7 0. 7 0. Ladies and gentlemen, all those in opposition to repealing the zoning bylaw, blue and green cards in the air, please. How can it be different things every time? Because different people did. <laughs> Mr. Basler. 56. Mr. Basler is 56. Mr. Pepe. 39. Mr. Pepe is 39. Mr. Armstrong. 53. 5 3. 5 3. 148. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Just doing a double check, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, the second vote does not carry, does not pass. We had 411 total voters this time. And in favor was 263, and in opposition was 148. The vote needed was 274 to carry, because there was 11 or so more voters. 20, actually 21 more voters. Motion to reconsider. 
If we want, no, you can't reconsider or reconsider. Um, if there's a challenge, you can't reconsider or reconsider vote. Oh, yeah. So it's one, over. One second. We don't require seven voters to stand, right? Let me just double check. I believe Point seven voters. One, 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 one. I'm dealing with one other first. All right. um, I believe, and I'm looking quickly, it requires seven voters to stand and request that. But I think when it's, re when it's counted, I think that's yeah, on a voice. Give me one second. I believe that was Ms. Coleman, right? Yeah, gotcha. Are you looking up yours? Seven voters, right? You don't have a bylaw on it either, so it's just. Right here. Once the vote has been taken by polling or dividing, yeah. either on motor's own motion or afterwards, the declaration, question, the, um, the, um, the declaration has been questioned. The counted vote, as declared by it, may not be questioned. So that's seven. Oh, yeah. So, in the case of a voice vote or a vote yeah. by show of hands, yeah. but that way, did a voice vote by a show of hands? No. Not a counting. It's did. a vote by show of hands. You did a show of hands. Oh, voice voter or show of hands. Once, miss this the one, assistance oh, of the polling. Some towns are shown by the moderator. But, okay, so yeah, one can. second. No, 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 because it's saying that in the case mm -hmm. of a voice voter, vote by show of hands, meaning mm -hmm. yeah. I will determine the vote. Yeah. If the vote is taken in any other manner, the moderation must the assistance of tellers. So on a counted vote, mm -hmm. I just want to get this right. Once those are taken by polling, we are dividing. Oh, yeah, and a counted vote. It's counted. Either on the moderator's own motion or after. His or her declaration is the question of the vote. Oh, it's just a citation. Yeah. You had a count and vote, and you declared by the monitor. It may not be questioned. All right, Ms. Coleman, to answer your question, a counted vote as declared by the moderator um, cannot be questioned. If I called it on a voice vote, you have the right to question it. And that requires the seven citizens to stand. But this is saying that because it was counted by a teller, independent tellers, not me, it can't be questioned. Okay? Point of order? Yes, Mr. Bonsack. Yeah? Uh, I just want to confirm the, uh, the numbers, please. Sure. Just we adding them. All right, the counts were 411 people voting total. You have to know that. 263 in favor. Okay. 148 in opposition. All right, thank you. I thought you said 253. I didn't hear right. But 263, thank yeah. You. Two, it required a 274 vote. Gentlemen, moving on now to Article 42. So where's the planning board guy? Because I've got to get Mr. Ladies and gentlemen, these are all still important issues in regard to the regulation of marijuana. Mr. Bouchard, are you moving this one? You are, right? So council needs to talk to you for one second. Mr. Cowing, do you mind coming forward for one minute, please? So he's just reading the regular one, right? Yeah, he's reading the regular one. Okay. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's conduct the rest of our business. Mr. Bouchard. Yes, I'm just finding it. Sorry, page 46. Move. Uh, first of all, Tom Bouchard, six quail run, also the planning board. Move that the town amend the zone, the town of Kingston zoning bylaws to amend section 4.21 dash marijuana establishments and attach table four of use regulations as printed in the warrant. Okay, just so um, it's attachment four table. We got that just for that being done. Accept that friendly amendment. You accept my friendly amendment? Yes. Table four. Thank you. Yeah, it's no big deal. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, while we're discussing this one, um, this requires a two third vote. Well, I, yeah, one second. We're still looking at this because whether we should just debate these together or debate them separately because there's two motions under this article because one's a general bylaw and one's a zoning bylaw. Technically, probably should have been broken out, but so we're gonna do it this way and I think we have to debate them separately. Yeah, debate them separately. I think we have to debate them separately. So right now we're just doing the zoning bylaw, which is to amend 4.21, which is to add table four. So I need a second on that. Second. Having a second on that. Um, Mr. Bouchard, would you address your motion one? I certainly will. <clears throat> Just as a little history, um, you've heard tonight that um, in the general election, Kingston voted against marijuana. So the planning board, uh, after uh, when we had to uh, deal with this, we drafted an, uh, um, an article to ban marijuana in the town of Kingston. So many of you might or might not know this. It came to the town meeting and it went the other way and it got legalized. Um, we did that article to ban, to mirror the, the vote, the statewide vote election and, uh, and the results in Kingston. So now at this point, so that, at that point we had to come up with uh, zoning rather quickly. And we took a real conservative side to that. And um, so tonight, um, um, is um, this article, which I will explain what we're trying to do, um, is partially uh, to try to clean up a few things that we originally passed, and also it's um, um, listening to the people that came to our meetings about some changes that uh, would be um, beneficial. So first of all, um, we're trying to clean up the language where children commonly, regularly congregate. And the intention of that in the original uh, um, zoning that we passed was to be away from schools, be away from kindergartens, be away from preschools, be away from state sanctioned um, children's uh, okay. facilities. Okay. And so we have taken out that language where children regularly congregate it got confusing. People thought a bus stop would be where people regularly congregate, and it went on and on and on. So we uh, were trying to clean that up and identify the things that in the, in the commercial zone, um, a, a marijuana establishments would have to be 1,000 feet. We have not changed the 1,000 feet. Also, in addition to that, we have added um, to, right now it's just allowed in commercial. We have added commercial industrial and industrial. And that has been a lot of input from the town's people at our meetings. And um, people think it might take it away from neighborhoods, perhaps. Um, but it, it adds uh, additional places to put it, perhaps um, away from residences. And that's been a, a kind of a big um, uh, request, a large request from people at our meetings. So we've, we've gone ahead and added that. And that's the explanation. Um, if we need further explanation, we have Rob um, <clears throat> Downey. We have uh, zoning enforcement um, enforcement uh, officer 
um, Jason Silver as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bouchard. Yes. Um, Janet Stanford, 53 Evergreen Street. I'm gonna urge a no vote on this one, although it sounds good when you first look at it, and I appreciate um, some of what the zoning board, um, I mean the planning board tried to do with this. I want everyone to be clear, this would still allow, or yes, this would continue to allow the shop, um, the purple building and the other building on Main Street. And I'm against that. I don't think that the pot shops should be in the neighborhoods. And while I do support the attempt to have them be put into the commercial industrial or industrial, I still will urge a no vote on this one. We have some more articles coming up that would help to keep the pot shops out of the neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stampin. <laughs> Mr. Cowing? Uh, believe it or not, I'm actually gonna urge a yes vote on this. this. This article in combination with my article number 44, this will open up the industrial zone and commercial industrial zone for retail but this will also, in combination with Article 44, which I will speak to further on down the warrant, Article 44 will provide a 100-foot buffer to residences. So this will allow the retail to go into the industrial park, and then 44 will add that 100-foot buffer to residences to effectively protect our neighborhoods, Main Street neighborhoods, Wapping Road neighborhoods, and I will speak to that. There's some language in there, obviously I don't agree with, for people that are looking for the ban, this is, you know, this is gonna be the compromise that we can all kind of get behind, I believe. Um, it'll allow the stores to come into town. The, you know, we weren't able to get that two-thirds vote, but this is a combination between this article and article number 44 will be, you know, second best. It'll protect our neighborhoods. That's what we're looking for. That's our compromise. Thank you, Mr. Cowing. Any further debate? Uh, Bill Marabito. Let me, I've got somebody in front of you and then you. Go ahead, Mr. No, Marabito. Bill Marabito, 303 Elm Street. I just have a question for council. Um, you had mentioned earlier that if we didn't repeal the zoning law, that it was gonna, it, it could sort of open us up where the AG would strike down the, the outright ban. If we, um, add more restrictions like this or start modifying the zoning law? What impact will that have on the AG's decision um, on, on the article to ban? There's tons of history on that. You know, the reality is what I said was, <laughs> I didn't say that if you didn't repeal the zoning bylaw that the general bylaw would be effective. I said that she could possibly theoretically take that into consideration because one of the things that she highlighted in her decision was that the Brewster bylaw, although it was a general and it only required a majority, only passed by 53% or 52%, whatever it was. Um, so the reality is I don't think this would necessarily have an impact on her decision because you're regulating further. Um, it, it wouldn't suggest that at this point she understands you know the repeal has failed, so you're reacting to what happened at town meeting. Um, she understands that, number one, we, had, we have contingency after contingency when you have these competing articles and you're ba basing your vote on the best information you have at the moment, and right now you know the zoning bylaw wasn't repealed, and you know that the general bylaw is called into question, so you're regulating in the best manner that you think is appropriate. So my estimation, I don't think she would um, weigh in on that at all. Does that help? Yeah. Sir? Uh, Fred Studley, 22 Riverside Drive. Um, in talking about all this, uh, this zoning um, and opening up properties for um, some businesses to come in um, and opening up the commercial locations, I think um, one big thing to take away is, um, speaking of compromises, I think one of the main compromises we can all have is benefiting from the tax revenue of these businesses. And if we're gonna 
open up any land, um, like in the commercial zones, you gotta keep in mind the location of these, um, these spots, and they're kind of off the beaten path. Um, I mean, just you know, for sake of argument, um, exit nine, you, uh, and route three in general, you're gonna have a lot of traffic coming from the north going down the Cape. So if you, have, if you had a spot that was you know, right off the highway or something like that, it would mitigate a lot of the traffic that people are worried about, also, it would bring in money from outside of our immediate community, which is a huge factor in this. Um, I think the most important factor when talking about the tax revenue from something like this, because if you're gonna keep them off the beaten path and kind of low key, and not many people are gonna know about it, it's just gonna, it's just gonna circulate money in our own mini like micro economy here. Whereas if we had something in a more feasible, um, more favorable location, it would bring in more money from outside sources. And I just think that that's a factor that nobody's addressed, and uh, they should have. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, just to clarify off of the last uh, point. Yes, Mr. Um, Cowing. The industrial park that I was referring to and, you know, that is intended and, you know, zoned appropriately, that's immediately off of exit eight. There's several lanes of traffic. It's, you know, so much easier to get off of exit eight get into that area, you know, kind of like in the area of the commuter rail and the transfer station, there's, there's some area in there that that's, you know, what I'm intending and thinking of when I speak to the commercial industrial zone. That's a perfect spot for it. The traffic in, in and around Main Street at exit nine is a nightmare. You know, obviously I live in that area. It's, it's you know, totally not set up to have some retail marijuana shops in that spot. Uh, exit eight's a perfect spot for it. Also, the second point I stood up to make was just to be clear for everybody, just kind of listening to the conversation around my seat, you know, the, the ban has failed. I acknowledge that, just so everybody in the room is clear. If we want to try to, you know, protect our neighborhoods, this article, article number 42, in combination with article number 41, the resi sorry, 44, the residential buffer is the way to go. The ban has failed as far as, you know, the zoning bylaw failed. And this is the way to go from this point forward. Thank you, Mr. Cowing. Um, Mr. Fonts. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I was supposed to announce that Matthew Wiegand, you lost your license at South Front um, on one of the tables. Just go see Diane Poirier, our assistant town clerk. And I forgot to announce the votes, um, ladies and gentlemen. So um, the Board of Selectmen had favorable 401, and the Planning Board has favorable 400. So I, those are all in place now. Mr. Fonts. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Moderator. Uh, I just wanted to clarify one thing real quickly because it sounded like Mr. Cowling was saying that the ban failed. My understanding is that that's still up for debate. We don't know if the general bylaw is going to so in, be in upheld, Brewster, right? So in Brewster, under these same circumstances where there was an existing zoning bylaw and they passed a general bylaw to prohibit, the AG disapproved. Okay, so to that to that extent, um, if you were one of the folks that wanted the ban, I would urge you to support this because if they're going to come, you want them to come in places that make sense. So that's kind of been my position all along when I was saying like it's not about if you're for pot or against pot, it's more about how you look at the effects on the community. So to me, um, setting aside the emotions of how you feel about pot, me personally, not for it, but... Um, it's not about you personally, it's about the town and the community and how it's impacted. So to me, if they're gonna come, you want these uh, locations going in places that make sense. Sticking a pot shop up at the Purple Building, which is literally the nucleus of like numerous neighborhoods, is not good for the town. Putting them up, exit eight, industrial, commercial area, not really a whole lot of residences right there, probably makes more sense. Um, so, if you weren't for pot and you wanted the ban, I would urge you to strongly consider voting in support of this, so at least we're doing it in a fashion that's sensible. Thank you, Mr. Fonts. <clears throat> Sir? I Anthony you Andrews, are... 59 South Street. I missed it. Anthony Andrews, 59 Thank you. South. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to amend Article 42. Under zoning bylaw 4214, location line one, move to a to amend the distance requirement for a marijuana retail retailer in a commercial zone from 1,000 feet to 800 feet. It is. 
Do you have that in writing, sir? Yes. Perfect. Bring it on down. Oh, it's definitely with it's a lesser included, so I'm not, yeah. yeah. So I just want to be clear on where he's so you have that. Does he say exactly where four point two and four? So just a thousand feet. So this is here, but I want to make sure it's Q. Are we talking Q? Or are we talking that's what I'm trying to say. It is Q. Okay. Because then we also have the one here, map to picking properties, land uses within a thousand feet radius under U. So I just want to make sure that we're clear on what we're doing here, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Does he need to do you different? They, okay. Yeah, that's All right. just what they submit. All right, Mr. Um, Andrews, thank you very much. Um, that is, I'm going to rule that as in order. Yes, you're lesser included. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't hear if you're all talking. That is considered lesser included. It's within the four corners of the article. So that motion is properly on the floor. Um, I need a second on that motion to amend. Second. I have a second on that. So Mr. Andrews, would you like to address your motion to amend? Yes. Uh, if the reason, if the safety of children is the concern, then the zone in which the establishment is located should not really make a difference between the state law and the proposed distance for industrial zones. Within the article, it seems that it's been established that 500 feet is acceptable safe distance from the school or those other places where minors congregate. If the distance of 500 feet is acceptable elsewhere, then there is no real difference between 800 feet and 1,000 feet. Huh? Who is it protecting? I mean, what's the difference? But, you, but you're proposing to reduce it to 800 feet. Right. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure that I understood what you were proposing. Okay. All right. Come on, folks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now debating the motion to amend the 800 feet oh, versus yeah, 1,000. I'm ready for this. Well, I'm Sheila Vaughn. I am uh, 7 Frank Street. I'm actually on the school committee in Kingston. And actually, great timing because um, I'm very much against this. I think the 1,000 feet is very important because if you go to 800, they can go to the Burger King because they're only 83 feet shy from being 1,000 feet. So again, it is very close to um, if they were to get this, they would be able to go to the Burger King. And again, off of exit nine is where our schools are. I live at exit eight, I get it. Okay, I live at exit eight. If I have to have them in industrial area, I have to have that. But I don't want them next to my school. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Vaughn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep it moving. Debating the 800 feet. Janet, That's what we're debating. Okay, Janet, only. Janet Stanford, 53 Evergreen Street. Can we move this question for the amendment? Um, no, that's like way too soon. I'm gonna take a few more people. Only one person spoke. Okay, well, can I speak then if I can't? No, you move the question. Okay. Um, and I'm not accepting it. So, um, ma'am, about the 800 feet motion to amend. Yes, Gotcha. Hi, my name's Tracy Owen. I live on Brookings Drive. I have children that go to that elementary school. Actually, they go to Kingston Intermediate. The difference in the footage from the Burger King to the elementary school, the actual physical building is over 1,000 feet. The distance is 83 feet in difference semantically because of the way the property lines sit. And it's over, over the highway, over a railroad track. And how many of your, your kindergartners are wandering across a railroad track, yeah. ladies and gentlemen? So, right, and I also would like to point out that this building is gonna be strictly um, <coughs> observed by our state and they're not gonna have an appearance that is unpleasant. They're gonna have a discreet appearance. They can't put any signage up that says marijuana on it. It's just gonna have the business name. It's gonna be designed to, to facilitate the traffic flow in and out. And it, that building is already designed for it. It's a fast food restaurant. So it, I think it's the perfect use for this business. And I hope that you all have a reconsideration and think about this. This is supporting our local economy and supporting a local business and providing jobs to our community that are sorely needed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. 
Ma'am, you. Thank you, Madam. Tina Studley, 22 Riverside. Um, I am supporting the motion for the 800 feet. Um, I, again, look at things quite differently. Um, I believe the Burger King location is perfect because you're just on and off the highway. I really don't know anybody that's gonna go to Burger King by way of the school. Um, pretty much that on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Cowing, you were up twice on the main motion, so you can only address the 800. Okay. Because you get two bites of the apple. So sure, on yep. the motion to amend. Yep, that's all I want to address is the motion to amend. I'm against that lowering of that to 800 feet. I think that Burger King location, it's high visibility, it's highly trafficked, and there is no quick on and off the highway at that intersection. I don't know. We all drive that intersection. That that is not a, there's no quick on and off right there. And you know, it doesn't need to be lowered to be closer to the school just so it can go into that location. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I just want to be clear, uh, Mr. Bouchard, can you answer that question? Is the Burger King, what was the footage again that it is or isn't in? 83 feet. Of the thousand. Of the thousand, that's correct. Okay, so the 800 rules it completely out. It goes from boundary to boundary. Property boundary, right. That's right. But the 800, because on the thousand it's ruled out as well then, is what you're saying. You got it backwards. No, 1,000 it's in, 800 it would be out. Opposite. 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 Thank you. How is that opposite? Because I'm just got confused the, on that the myself. Buff, the buffer makes it this big. This is a this big buffer, and the Burger King's here, 1,000 feet. You should yeah. get to 800. Okay. The Burger King's there. Got it. All right. Thank you. I just got confused myself. <laughs> Not a surprise. We needed a visual. Sir? Yeah. Paul <laughs> Sardella. <laughs> Sorry, you getting your name? Paul Sardella, 73 Ring Road. Bottom line, what are we all talking about here, people? We're talking about safety of children, correct? correct? Yes, and it has to do with the difference or the distance of keeping the, the pot shops away from a school, and we're talking about residents, et cetera. Uh, if that's truly the concern and the intent of these pot shop companies, then why are they soliciting, right, for jobs or to hire people promoting for jobs at pens where children congregate. Thank you, sir. One of you have to call it. I don't. I got distracted with the 800. Do you mean who was next? Yeah. I'll go next. Jean Coleman, 20 Howlands Lane. Um, I'm also on the Kingston School Committee, and we did vote uh, four to one to not accept. Um, less than a thousand feet zoning from the schools. So I would urge you to vote no on this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Fonts. Uh, yes, Joe Michael Fonts, 16 May Avenue. Just a couple of points here. I think, uh, first of all, it's very important to highlight that this has everything to do with the, Burger, the old Burger King location. So being that that's the case, I think we have to really think about one very important issue, in my opinion, is the traffic. I'll tell you, I come to almost every town meeting. I can't remember the last time I saw this many people here. So people are into pot. <laughs> so I think traffic's gonna be an issue if it goes in right there. Um, you know, that's the main drag. Anyone that's coming from Rocky Nook all the way up, even from, again, we heard about the 600 units that are going in at the old Walmart in North Plymouth. There's gonna be a lot of traffic coming up 3A going towards the highway. The last thing you wanna do is put a pot shop right before the on-ramp. That is going to create major traffic issues. Um, Come on. And then just one, one last point. I went to a number of the uh, community outreach meetings. We heard a lot from a lot of the players involved here about how they care about the community. They're going to work with the community. I would argue here tonight that the community, particularly the folks that are in support of the ban, have been more than reasonable particularly the gentleman who moved the article himself, who came up with the uh, petition article saying, hey, let's be reasonable. If we're not gonna get a ban, let's at least put them in places that make sense. So the community is speaking, and they haven't even gotten what they want yet, and they're already showing that they're not really willing to work with us. So what does that tell you? The fonts, I have Mr. Bouchard. On the motion to amend. Yes. Yes, yeah, so right now, commercial, 
thousand feet. And I just want to let you know if 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 a if a location comes up that makes sense, any of these applicants can go to the zoning board of appeals and get relief on that thousand feet. So I, I just think it should be left the way it is. And if they think they have a location that warrants reducing the, that distance, they can go to the Zoning of Board of Appeals and get relief. So I think we should leave it the way it is. Thank you, Mr. Bouchard. Sir? Patrick Dacey, 15 Brightside Avenue. I apologize for the volume. Um, I would offer, uh, for Mr. Bouchard's comments, um, you'd meet the same level of uh, intensity from the people that want things to protect the community. Um, for those that say 800 versus 1,000, what's the difference? If I'm $200 short for a $200 meal, I'm not eating, all right? <laughs> and as far as 83, I have an 85-foot ladder truck, all right? If I don't have the 85-foot ladder truck, I can't get you off your roof, <laughs> all right? So it does mean something. As far as Burger King closing down exit nine, take in point Ikea. What does and what has Ikea done for years now? Virtually put Route 24 at an absolute standstill, and that's for furniture, folks. The other thing is, if we move the numbers from 1,000 to 800, and that does pass, we are setting a legal precedent, whereas anybody has a distance problem, we can go ahead and say, well, they moved it for marijuana. Why don't you move it for me? There is a precedent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have um, you. And then Ms. Coleman. You're, not Ms. Coleman, I'm sorry, Ms. Stanford. Sorry, uh, Ms. Stanford. So I was just trying to make sure. Go ahead. Um, Fred Studley, 22 Riverside Drive. Um, uh, just to, uh, again, addressing these, um, the zoning issue where, the, where they want to put these shops at exit 9 compared to, say, exit 8 or exit 10. Um, he alluded to all this traffic here tonight for pot, but most of the people here are against it. So I found that funny. But um, also, I'm just thinking of this uh, exit 9 versus exit 10. Burger King was already there, and th they do millions of dollars in research to uh, understand what locations are feasible for that kind of traffic. So, I mean, traffic may be backed up there sometimes here and there, but at exit 10, are you just trying to congest traffic again at another ed area? Or He's speaking one person. It's very disrespectful. I am so sorry, Mr. Studley, continue. That's appalling. All right, Ms. Um, Stam, blah, blah, blah. sorry, Ms. Stanford. Well, I'm actually waiting for the original article to come back up. So were you gonna move the question on this it, motion well, to if, amend? If I move it, can I get to speak on that article? How many bites? Yeah, 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 you can go back and speak on the main article. Okay, then I move to, yeah, move the question. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, all those in favor of moving the question, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. One moment. Is this a point of order? No. I believe you have permission to speak, please. Um, I believe I was going to give Ms. Stanford, but she's sitting down. I was going to give her the first option since like she did it, but go right I, ahead. I would like to address this audience. Wait, huh? We've got to move the question at second, but you've got to come I know. I'm doing a vote. I'm in the middle of a vote. No, I carried it unanimously. I already called and called it. Oh, I'm He's sorry, right. I yeah. Council sorry. was just sorry. <laughs> You're correct. Are you uh, on the main article? You may speak on the main article. Yeah, yes. Well, we moved the question to, to amend. The amendment, um, now I have to vote the amendment. Give me one second. You're right, I'm wrong. She's right. I'm wrong. Give me one minute, I have to do one more vote. Um, so on the motion to amend, thank you. I lost sight of, you know that. Um, so this is Mr. Andrews' motion to amend, to reduce it from the 1,000 to 800 feet and 4.2.14, line one, in its queue. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Motion does not carry on a voice vote majority column. 
Okay, now we're back on, thank you everyone, we're back on the main, main motion. So yes, sir, you wanted to speak on the main motion. You, okay, you have to go to the microphone and say your name. But it has to be on the motion. All right, we'll make it. My name is Barry Mathias, Eddie Wapman Road, Kingston. I've been sitting in this room since 7 o'clock this, this, this evening. And I don't see one member of any public safety sitting up front here so these, these questions can be addressed to them. We're getting statistics from Colorado and California. What is going on in here? You've got public safety. We've got to find out about the roads. Who can answer it? Police chief. How many Mr. ambulance Mr. Mathias, both of our, our safety people are here. They're not up front. They're they don't heading. have to sit up front. You can ask them a question if you'd like to. Well, I'm saying they should be up front because these, are, these questions are being addressed and people okay. are answering, but they, they're not that's, up here. That's your Get opinion. Get them up okay. here. Okay, moving on. Uh, Mr. Fonts. I, I just had a quick question. On the uh, amendment, can that be reconsidered to like lock it in or does that not have to happen? No, no. no. On, am on amendments, that doesn't have to? No, because I'm hoping within the next okay, couple I just minutes we're sure. voting the main motion. I just wanted to make sure it didn't come up like tomorrow morning, it gets reconsidered. No, 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 never, okay. never. Once the main motion is, is voted, it's dead. Okay, yeah. just wanted to make sure. Uh, Ms. Stampin, yes. Okay, I just wanted to um, correct what I said before. I actually um, misspoke. I actually do support um, saying yes to Article 42 as it stands. Okay, thank you. Hello, Brian Spires, 9 Wapping Road. Um, particularly after the resounding opposition to the last um, proposed amendment to Article 42, I think it's important that I offer uh, a similar motion to amend Article 42. And I also would like to amend the, uh, the buffer zone from 1,000 feet uh, for commercially zoned properties uh, and change that to 100,000 feet. <laughs> and, Can't do it. I get, the, I get the sentiment, but that would definitely be outside of the zone, outside of the um, four corners of the I mean, article. It's clearly in f four corners here, but. <laughs> it might be in your four corners. It's not in my four corners. Well, my four I get the corners, sentiment, yeah. and I think the body does too. So we can't. Uh, you cannot make an amendment to make it. Uh, they they want to. Well, less or included. 100,000 is not less or included of 1,000. Oh, okay. So only less, not more. Correct. Okay. That's, yeah. It's a little bit weird. Doesn't cut both ways, but thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Sir? All right, Tim Dwyer, Country Club Way. I just have a couple of quick questions. If we were to vote no on this article, does the existing zoning stay in place? Yes. Okay. Yes. So given that, I have a couple of questions for Tom Bouchard. So, as I see it, you've eliminated the buffer from public parks, houses of worship, and housing facilities owned by public housing authority. What was the thought process behind that? Mr. Bouchard? The thought process was that the intent of the original bylaw was to protect for schools, kindergartens, preschools, and things of that nature. Okay. Not to end up with two places, in the, and only two places in the whole town that everybody's fighting over, just maybe. Like, maybe a, like industrial form. parks? What's that? Like industrial parks? Industrial parks we, is, is part of our... Um, is right, what, so that's like one of the places... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, one question. You just well, have to be clear. Go ahead, sir. What is the question? So, uh, again, I was just curious as to why you would have eliminated public parks from and houses of worship, and which I believe are already have a buffer from liquor stores, correct? Um, I don't so know why would there be stores. less of a buffer for <laughs> marijuana facilities than for liquor stores? We didn't one intend, second, we Tommy, didn't intend to eliminate Tommy, any... Mr. Bouchard, hold yes, on one second. Go ahead. Council's saying would like to respond so, to this. So where are you, if, if I am understanding you correctly, you're asking Mr. Bouchard why he's striking public parks as a area of a sensitive receptor area? Yeah, 4.21.5.
No, okay, so look at, that's just their submission requirements where they're depicting maps. You know, it's, it's not, that's not the buffer itself, so that's, are you clear on that, that that's just the map they have to submit when they're submitting to the planning board? No, understood, but oh, if, okay. if those, those, if those facilities that. existed, it would be part of the map, right? Yeah, they would be part yeah. of the map okay. under the existing zoning. So they're not gonna be part of the map? That's right, that's right. right. I, thought, I thought you were referring to the fact that that was somehow a buffer no, no, no. and it's not. Okay. And I mean, so it seems okay. to me that the, that, the, that the zoning in place is more restrictive than the amendment that we're being asked to vote on. The existing zoning gives the planning board discretion as it relates to facilities in which minors commonly congregate, i.e. library, playground, public parks, things of that nature. I would prefer to take these things on a case-by-case -case basis, giving the planning board some latitude with respect in a public hearing with respect to these applications and not be sort of pigeonholed into having to follow this restrictive zoning ordinance that we're being asked to vote on. So my opinion is I would prefer to see the zoning as is, which again appears to me to be more restrictive. Thank you, sir. I, that was the, in, the yes, intent, sir. I'll answer. The, the intent was to clarify and define in a much more, um, in, a, in a better way, what the original intent was. Where children commonly congregate is a very broad, is very broad language, and, and it okay. wasn't really working out. Um, okay, one minute, you're not at the microphone. You can't just speak from there, but basically it's the same idea. It's fluid, it gives you more authority. Moving on. Um, can, sir? I, can I mention yes. one thing no, real no, no, quick? No, 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 you can't. Go ahead, sir. Uh, before Mr. Beauchard sits down, I have a question to ask the planning board. I, I guess you're the spokesman for the planning board. In this proposal... What was you, your name? Paul Van Tangley, I'm sorry, Five Brightside Avenue. Thank you. Uh, right here, you're calling for 1,000 feet for commercially zoned properties, and then the thought process behind 500 feet uh, for industrial, commercial, and industrial park properties. Why the two different rates? That's Mr. Bouchard, can you answer that one? Uh, well, can I? It's a good question. Um, come on, Robbie, Robbie can come on. I, I, I'm just curious where it came okay. from. Um, but one thing I, I do want to say is that, that everybody knows this is all, any of these places will be done yeah. by special permit, protected oh, sure. by special permit. It's another process they have to go through. And I just want everybody to know that, that this is not like just carte blanche, they come in and they can march into wherever they want. They still have mm -hmm. to go through the whole special permit process, <clears throat> which is very difficult. Thank you. Um, addressing the difference between why 1,000 and one and 500 and the other. Yeah. And identify yourself, please, Rob. Rob Downey, town planner. Um, the idea behind that is to open up the industrial and commercial industrial park zones without having certain buffers that would keep people from going in there. And leaving it in the commercial zone will prohibit certain properties, particularly around exit nine, from um, being able to apply for the special permit to open up. So it's shifting those shops further south in town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Downing. Sir? Stephen Freed, 37 Bay Farm Road, Kingston. Um, so I'm a former FAA pilot examiner, safety counselor, et cetera. Um, and I also own a company called Microway. And we sit across the street from four um, daughters provisional care. Uh, I'm thinking about putting a large fence right around my building, okay, because of the fact that I'm expecting the 600 to 1,200 people that are visiting, okay, this pot shop that's opening this summer in Plymouth, okay, to produce. 600 to 1,200 cars, okay, per day, traffic. And not only that, okay, the road I'm currently on turns out to be a shortcut between North Plymouth, okay, and Colony Place, the Industrial Park Road, and it's now becoming basically stagnated with traffic. So I don't think the town of Kingston has the resources to manage, okay, these kind of operations. For example, as a child growing up in Las Vegas, okay, to work on the strip, I required a sheriff's card, and the purpose okay, was that to keep the crime off the strip. I currently fly a sailplane out of Montague, California, and we fly along these ridges, and we see all the pot farms going on down there. It costs about $100 per pound to produce pot, okay, in California, whereas it costs between $1,000 and $2,000 here in Massachusetts 
everyone in California now is bringing their product east. And in fact, they're bringing so much product that you can't rent a car leaving either Southern Oregon or Northern California. Can you this, get to the actual bylaw? What I'm, okay, so what I'm about to tell you is you don't have the police force required to keep, well, for, for Southern, for, first of all, the people across the street now have been changed hands twice. Okay, the first guys came in, they had to put a million dollars down. They did that, no problem. They've since been bought out twice. Oh, you need I, to wrap it up. You're okay, so two. I'm telling you I'm the town's got to... not sure which way you want people you, to vote. You've got a safety problem here, and you're not addressing that at all tonight. And that's something that really disturbs me. Um, Mr. Randall. Um, Dennis Randall, 39 Winter Street. I appreciate uh, the responsibility of the planning board, because what we... I don't think anyone in Kingston, whether you're for or against um, uh, the commercial sale of uh, cannabis, wants those activities taking place in the middle of a residential neighborhood. We, no more than we want a bar or a convenience store or a big box store in our backyard. Zoning is the way that we as a community and as a town decide where these facilities will be established. Special permit gives the planning board the unique authority to look at the circumstances and make a decision and a variance if they feel it's in the best interest of the town. Because what we currently have without, without any kind of amendment is, is too restrictive and it force, we don't have the palette of choices before us. The planning board as a special permit authority will have that palette, will have that discretion. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to announce that it is after 9.30, so as a result, you need to go pick up your children that are in daycare. <laughs> daycare ended at 9.30. So um, I'd like to start wrapping this up, ladies and gentlemen, so I think we've debated enough. Mr. Harlow. Uh, Daniel Harlow, 31 Howlands Lane. I had a question based on a previous question about the 500 for commercial industrial park properties. Would that lessening to 500 feet open it up for the area off exit 10 that's right by the boys and girls or the boy scout property that's behind the um or next to goodrich lumber it's behind where the old mid cape i believe hey, used rob, to be rob. and behind the bog rob mr dowie Uh, I believe it potentially could, depending on what the uh, Boy Scouts is classified as. If it doesn't fall under any of the uh, pre-existing preschools, um, basically if it doesn't fall under the um, pre-existing state certified educational centers serving children 17 years or younger, then it would open it up. But we don't know whether or not, sorry, Madam Moderator. Yes. We, we don't know whether or not a Boy Scout property falls under any of these properties. I can't say. Okay. Okay, Mr. Fonz, Mr. Marabito, you've both already spoken. My thing is I'm calling debate. It's over. I was just gonna move it. Okay, I well, was gonna move calling it too. debate, we're done. <laughs> so let's, um, ladies and gentlemen, now, in regard to Article 42, the motion one. Remember, only motion one. So on motion one, all those in favor say, I oh, never mind. It's a two-third, I'm gonna count it. Tellers? Right. <laughs> Point of information, what do you mean motion, by motion one? Motion to amend did not pass, so we're on the original motion, all right? If you remember under motion for Article um, 42, there's two motions listed, if you all have a book, on page 46. Motion one, he only moved the zoning bylaw. The next motion will move the general bylaw. So this motion is to move the zoning bylaw, which was all part and parcel up through page 45, the little schedules that were there, all the way through that. That's the zoning bylaw. And as he said, it was to change it, make it 1,000 feet commercially, 500 industrial, and to, as, what did he say, abolish the and um, other things. Yes? Um, we've got this article in the general book on page 31 and 32. I'm not sure it's what 
I don't know what book I have then. No. All right, sorry. My book that they gave me is 45. Sorry. So what page is it? What page is it? 33. Oh, 33. I don't have the one that you have. I usually do. Here. Yeah. Page 33. So 33, correct. Page 33. Thank you very much. Oh, it's because mine are broken out into individual articles. <laughs> my, my, my numbers are off. I forgot that they did that for me this year. Yes. If you give me the book, I'm going to hold it up. No, no, no. Counsel, give it to me. Yeah, if you give it to me, I'll show you everybody what they're doing. On this article, if you've seen it, all right, when it starts on page 31. Oops, need the glasses. Starts on page 31. These are the zoning changes right through these graphs or whatever they're called, the tables, all right, right through the tables, all right, those are going to be what you're voting now. The second half is just the bottom section, okay? Okay, it's the 4.21 section. So it's not the 20% retail. Right, it's not the 20% retail section. All right, that's going to be chapter six. This is all of the ones that are under the 4.21. Then we move on to the 6-7-2. Everybody understand what they're voting? It's pretty much what we've just debated for. OK. Starting on page 31. 4.21.1, purpose. 4.21.3, general requirements. 4.21.4, location. 4.21.5, application process and requirements. And then the tables that fall under that. Okay? Everybody got it now? Okay. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, on the first motion, it's a two-third requirement. It's a zoning bylaw change. All per uh, the, the, the. blue and green cards if you are in favor of the article. Well, the motion under the article, 42. Oops, I'm sorry. Mr. Basler, 114, better known as 114. Yes. Mr. Pepe, 101. 101 Dalmatians. Mr. Armstrong, 92. All righty, all those against Article 42 motion, cards in the air. I guess I could have done that the other way. Mr. Basler. Four. Mr. Basler is four. Mr. Pepe. Nine. Nine. Mr. Pepe's nine. Mr. Armstrong. Seven. Seven.
Ladies and gentlemen, the motion carries with 307 in favor and 20 in opposition. So that's motion one carries with a two-third count, counted vote. Mr. Bouchard? Can I do a reconsideration? Um, I think it might make it confusing. Okay. This motion I'm reading is still in Article 42. It's the second half. Move that the town amend the town of Kingston general bylaws to amend chapter six, public peace and safety as printed in the warrant. I have a second on that. And uh, Mr. Bouchard, would you like to address this one? Yes, um, this basically cleans up some language and further clarifies uh, and defines um, the, the bylaw that's already there. If anybody has questions, I will defer to Rob Downey. Ladies and gentlemen, any debate? No. Seeing none, all those in favor of motion two on article 42 say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Motion carries with minimal opposition on a majority voice counted vote. Moving on to Article 43, we can do it, ladies and gentlemen. We still have time. We can do it. <coughs> Mr. Dalton. <laughs> I, you know what? I saw that afterwards when they were reading through it. But you want to... Madam Moderator. I don't know why he just doesn't say. Yes. I'd like to move reconsideration of the last motion. Um, motion one or motion two? Motion two. Motion two. Motion two, motion to reconsider. Um, do I have a second? Sorry, name? Michael Cow at 163 Summer Street. Um, there's no debate, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to vote yes, I would reopen to talk about debate, which we had none to begin with. And then the second would be, if you vote no, it closes debate forever. All those in favor of motion to reconsider? Aye. All those opposed? No. Motion does not carry. Which was that for this motion two. Was it? Motion to motion reconsider. Two. Motion two. Correct. Article 43, Mr. Dalton. Move to amend Article 43 to read that subsection Q of section 4.2 21.4 location. What, what, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. What, what are you reading? Article 43? He had to amend his because this doesn't make sense anymore because they just amended it. Okay. So at some point, can you get us that? Because we, we have none of this. Okay. Got it. All right. You follow because you get it. All right. Go ahead. Move to amend Article 43 to read. But subsection Q of section 4.21.4 location of the Kingston zoning bylaw as recently amended by article 42 be amended by inserting public parks after the word public libraries in the first and second sentences and that subsection U05 of section 4.21.5 application process and requirements of the Kingston zoning bylaws recently amended by article 42. Mr. Dalton, 42. actually, if you can stop, because unfortunately you started with the beginning, which you can't read. Motion to amend article 43, which you cannot do. So if you start the line below it that says move, um, that subsection Q of section 4.2, that's, uh, that's what you actually want to read. Okay. okay? Just so that we have it on the record. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. We'll be quick. No worries. Move that subsection Q of section 4.21.4, location of the Kingston zoning bylaws, recently amended by article 42, be amended by inserting public parks after the word public libraries in the first and second sentences, and that subsection U05 of section 4.21.5, application process and requirements of the Kingston zoning bylaw, as recently amended by article 42, be amended by inserting public parks after the word public libraries. Okay. Um, that being seconded. Um, okay, Mr. Dalton, address your motion. 
basically what this does is put back the um, possibility of public parks being an area that comes under the zoning bylaw that prevents um, marijuana retailers or um, uh, producers to be within that 1,000 foot or 500 foot radius from a public park. Um, what, all it does is add two words to the current bylaw that we just amended um, with the previous article. Uh, if you go back to that, it says pre-existing public or private schools providing education in kindergarten or any of the grades through 1 through 12, pre-existing preschools, pre-existing licensed daycare centers, public playgrounds, public libraries, and then you would have public parks, or pre-existing state certified education centers serving children 17 years or younger. That would be um, a requirement to show up on the map uh, if they were within that dis distance from a public park. Um, it would be also uh, prohibited from being placed within those distances from a public park. Now, full disclosure, um, we live on Elm Street and there's a public park, Sampson Park down the street. And you're probably wondering about the other public parks in town. And from the um, quick research that I did, going to the um, Conservation Commission's pamphlet on open space and recreation of prob properties, I looked at that and there's three parks, um, public parks listed in there, uh, Sampson Park, Patuxet Park, and Gray's Beach Park, although it's not called a park in that map. Um, it is in their thing, they're all public. There are other, two other parks listed on all the maps that I surveyed, which was GIS, the state GIS, the Conservation Commission map, Google Maps, and MapQuest. There's probably other maps out there, but the parks, the only three parks that were public parks that showed up on all these categories were Sampson Park, Patuxet Park, and Gray's Beach Park. And as I said, Gray's Beach Park, on all maps except on, it's labeled as a park, except on the Conservation Commission's map here, where it's listed as an open space recreation center, but just not called a park. So basically, this, this, uh, Amendment to the previous bylaw that we just passed would just prohibit um, the retailers and the distributors, or the manufacturers, or the growers from being located within the thousand-foot um, buffer zone or the 500-foot buffer zone from those three parks. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Old man mentioned. As far as I can determine, it doesn't affect any of these uh, the current retailers that. Um, that I know about that are looking to place buildings on Main Street or up in the industrial park. But that's just from my research. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. I, uh, I have a point of information, please. Are what, you doing I, a point of order? Point of order? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm calling on somebody else, and so I'm fine. I was asking for point of information. I'm trying to find out what article he's reading off of, because everything he read, I don't have in my, my book yet. Article so. 43 was amended because um, Article 42 passed. So what he changed was um, the references because he had now had to amend Article 42. Bottom page 34. Yeah. But it wasn't read the same way. I'm there. All right. Thank you. Yeah. It's right. So we changed it, the Q. It's the exact same idea. It's just the way it was listed in the original bylaw. It had essentially bullets of it an itemized list. And he was very specific in describing the changes he made by like deleting a semicolon originally. But those semicolons, et cetera, don't exist anymore because of the amendment you just made. So as a consequence, he's taking the same idea. It's just to include the public parks in the buffer zone. Right. Is that in response to the point of order? You just want to talk. All right, queue up. I got you queued. All right, ma'am. Lisa Warren, 111 South Street. Um, Mr. Dalton, I understand that you're looking at the map and you see some things that are listed as open space and they're also listed as parks. And I'm just wondering if the town of Kingston has defined something, uh, has defined what a public park is versus what open space is, so that when these come up, it's very clear as to what they are. Depends. Um, Mr. Boucher, can you answer that question? Has the town of Kingston in there? bylaws or in the planning board regulations to find public park? Do you have a park commission? No. Thank you. There you go. My question though is, um, so that has been, is there a state law that defines it? Do you have a park commission in Kingston? 
We have a rec commission, not a park commission. Trees, streets, and parks. Mr. Basler, have you identified parks <laughs> in the town of Kingston? No. <laughs> OK. Uh, Mr. Bouchard. The only definition I know is when, you're, when you park, you're not driving. <laughs> Does that help? Not at all, but I get it. Can I, can I express concern? To parking and not driving? No, to the, the side. You can now address the article as yes. Yes. Um, right away, my concern is this lack of definition. We have a, we're trying to open up areas that are maybe away from residents, as we discussed in the prior article, uh, well, prior half of this article. Oh, no, it was the prior article. And I'm, this is getting confusing. And um, <laughs> <laughs> the lack of definition, I mean, the dog park could be a public park. Now, we were a thousand, we're going to be a thousand feet from that dog park. Does that eliminate some of those particular awesome spaces for maybe this up in, uh, in the industrial park area? Perhaps. So I think, don't think there's enough definition here to pass this. It could really cause a lot of problems. So I would just urge you to vote no. And maybe at a, another meeting we could do something different. Thank you, Mr. Bouchard. I have Mr. Randall, Mr. Cowing, and then I have Ms. Fiori. Uh, I, so, M Brad Randall, consultant for Elevated Roots. I'd like to make a friendly amendment, or suggest a friendly amendment. Well, you can. I can only make friendly amendments, sorry. I'd like to suggest um, so an amendment. Maybe make, it's unfriendly. You would have to make a motion to amend. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to amend uh, to include, <laughs> so the three parks were Grays Beach, Samson Park, and Patuxet Park. And I'd like to make a motion to amend that those three parks are defined as the parks we're talking about. OK. Um, so the motion to amend, which I'll need you to put in writing, yeah. would be to define 04 public parks as defined as not as defined. What would be it as would listed be as? Pub public parks expressly limited to and whatever you listed, Gray's Beach Park, Patuxet no, he's, Park. He's got the three that he listed, but I got that. So you so wanted it, to say we, public parks expressly? Limited to. Expressly limited to, so yeah. So that it'd be the old four um, public, public parks. Oh, All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is his motion. So. You can, um, so that would be what you said was Samson, Pawtucket, and Gray's Beach. While you're writing that, I will inquire of, you need to do it now because we're moving this along. So I just need your 04, and there's a thing, public parks, expressly limited to. Um, Mr. Downing, Mr. Downing and uh, Mr. Bouchard, can you guys come forward for a second? Come forward for a minute. If you all stop talking, they could hear me. Can you explain um, in regard to Pottle Street in the recreational areas, in regard to Article 42? Are those areas already excluded in um, Article 42? Um, they're specifically asking Pottle, which is the base, which is the fields. So I and I believe I thought when I read it that it did, but I want that from you guys. He was writing it up a little bit differently to, instead of saying public parks, he just is saying move to amend article, whatever it is, um, to add any list. Okay, so I, the question comes up is, um, is playground town council, does playground include our fields? That would mean the fields behind the, um, the reed so, as well as the fields at Pottle and the what, fields at Cavoni, all of the fields. Is it like a baseball field? There are soccer fields, baseball fields, and... I would say no. I think of a playground as being where you have like the merry-go-round and stuff So there's like no swings. state, de there's no state, there's no state no. law that defines no, that. because, and also Doesn't. because you think about ballparks and you have men's leagues and, um, you know, like men's soccer yeah, leagues, yeah. it's not children. Okay. 
So now on your motion, I just wanted that answered so as people would know the answer. Um, you've now made it, you need to turn it over to us? Yeah. Okay, you did that? All right, ladies and gentlemen, you have a motion to amend. Article 43 to read as follows, 04. What are those things called? Um, parentheses. Paren. Samson Park, Grays Beach Park, and Patexic Park. So that is the motion to amend that's on the floor. Do I have a second? Yes, by inserting public parks, comma, or parentheses. No, he's no, replacing the, the word. So Mr. Brad Randall's motion is to, instead of having public parks be inserted, but have those specifically enumerated parks, Samson Park, Grays Park, and and Patoxet. No. Yeah, that's right. right. That's, what, that's what he's yep. doing. Yep. So you're removing the definition of the word public parks, and you're defining them as those three parks. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we can go. Um, we have this motion to amend. Do I have a second? Having a second on that. Um, Mr. Randall, you've addressed it. Do you need to address it more, or do you want to? Uh, just because Mr. Basler and uh, I, I believe it was Rob, town planner, said they can't define what public parks exactly are versus open space. This will define it. Um, the petitioner seconded it. I'd like your consideration. Thank you. Um, yes, on the motion to amend, Mr. Dalton. Um, one thing that certainly clears up which parks we're talking about here, um, my, our concern was that, especially with Samson Park being right across from one of the proposed, uh, previously proposed businesses, and it may still be, I don't know, but um, where the kids come out there, we've got the trail, the uh, Bay Circuit Path comes out there, there's a fishing pier there, uh, a lot of the scouts used to have their stuff down there to have a, um, a place right across the street from there where people could buy the stuff and go over and park in the park and smoke there. I didn't think that was appropriate. I don't think it's appropriate down by Grace Beach. So Patuxent Park was one of the ones that we identify as by, by the method I showed you. So I, I think that's a good thing and, a, and a, um, a good amendment, and it specifies which ones we're really looking at. Okay. Uh, the other thing, addressing uh, the other town employees here that I went to some of those planning board hearings and specifically brought up the public parks. And this, this amendment's been on the books here for two or three months. And I thought it would have behooved somebody to look up officially what public parks were to address this issue, because certainly the question came up. I looked up as best I could. So I think the amendment addresses that problem. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Um, Mr. Cowing? I'm going to speak uh, in opposition of this amendment. Um, I would like to be able to see a map with all the parks. I, you know, I'm not as familiar with all the parks that are, exist in Kingston at this moment, but, you know, I just I'm not comfortable taking everybody's word for these, you know, three named parks or whatever without further, you know, research. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cowing. Uh, Mr. Fonts? Uh, yes, John Michael Fonts, 16 May Avenue. Um, I have some concerns with this amendment being proposed by someone who's clearly on the pro side, um, and that's with all due respect. Anybody has any right to make any amendment? Of course, so. and I'm against it, okay. and I'm speaking as to go. why. Thank you. Um, so um, as coming from someone who was on, who's clearly on the pro side, I would argue that this amendment is less about what parks are included, but rather what parks may be excluded. So for me, um, I have a great deal of concern when we have a huge issue before this town. We've had a number of folks that are on the boards that we've been told to trust that there's a stringent process that they're going to have to go through. They can't even name what a park is. They don't even know what parks we have in town. And, and, and we've also been told, we've also heard that some of these boards have the unique authority to make these decisions. I would argue that we have the unique authority to make these decisions. Thank you. Um, sir? Tim Dwyer, Country Club Way. I just want to give one example of why this amendment doesn't work. Um, I wouldn't want a pot dispensary on Pottle Street where 1,200 kids go every weekend. And, and there's, there's other, I'm sure there's other examples. By just limiting it to three parks, um, you exclude so many others that could potentially be issues. So I just think it's a bad amendment. Thank you, sir. Um, Susan, yes, Ms. Sherman. Sorry. Susan, Susan Sherman, 215 Main Street. 
I, I'm a little confused at this point, but what about Camp Mekong? Does that come into uh, play here? Should we be including that? Well, under the motion to amend, it would not be included. So right now, under that motion to amend, it's very specific as to the three parks okay, that are listed. thank you. Yeah. Can't make um, Yes, sir? Thank you. Donald Hill, 60 Elm Street. I live across the street from Samson Park. I take my grandchildren there for nature walks, bird watching, and fishing. And I see no difference between a park or a playground. You take your kids to the park or a playground, it's like one and the same. And I think we should include all parks and not limit to three. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Randall, this er is your own motion to amend, so sure, yeah, um, keep quickly. Yep. I'm, so I, first of all, I'll take issue with the previous comments that we're doing this to exclude parks. So 110 Main Street, I'm a consultant for elevated routes. We are not within 1,000 feet of open space or any parks. This simply defines which parks are considered parks and takes out the ambiguity. I have a hard time understanding why a body would want to vote on something that is left broadly legally defined and enter a gray area uh, where we have a chance to set the record straight. So, I mean, someone else could bring an amendment to add something else, but we're protecting Sampson Park, Gray's Beach Park, and Patuxent Park. Okay, thank you, sir. David Kennedy, 13 Copper Beach Drive. I'd like to move the question. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, vote on move the question, um, which would be the motion to amend. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries with minimal opposition. So ladies and gentlemen, on the motion to amend. There's only one amendment. No, there's two. No, there's, there's one. only one amendment. His is an opening motion. His is a main, it's considered a main motion. I have the amendment to delete the word public parks and add a definition, Sampson Park, Patuxent Park, Grays Beach Park. That's what's on the floor right now with the motion to amend. Just so everybody knows what they're voting on. Strike public parks and define them specifically as Sampson Park, Patuxent Park, Grays Beach Park. Yep. Everybody know what they're voting on? Yes. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the motion um, to amend, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Motion does not carry. Voice vote majority. Um, back on the main motion. which it might have sounded like he was amending it because that's what he said, but it was his main motion, so it's a main motion, not a motion to amend. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, that would be, we're gonna move that one. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Um, Nancy Alvaska, 5-6 Treetop Lane. Um, I find this motion, this entire motion to be a little bit early since we have not defined what a public park is. Um, and once we have on the books for planning, how we're defining with this one, one thing what a public park is, is that going to interfere with future planning board decisions? Um, I think there's plenty of time before a marijuana shop is going to ever get here to actually look at what a public park is and truly define it instead of jumping in, putting something that could affect future planning board and zoning decisions. What's the time frame? So they would have to post a public meeting, have a special. I know. Are we talking six months? Are we talking a year? Oh, that's. I'm just trying to get a feeling for. She said that it couldn't be heard before we could come back, and I just wanted to. But if you can't, we'll. I suppose fine. if someone applied to the planning board tomorrow, um, there would have to be a publication um, and a hearing process. If it went just in one single night, you're looking at three weeks. I okay. guess, <laughs> but, but everything would have to nights. come into place okay. tomorrow for that to okay. play out. So there's going to be a process. Um, yes, Mr. Bonsack. Peter Bonsack, 33 Final Estates. Uh, we're, well, nothing's going to happen for quite a while. I'd, I'd like to suggest that maybe we table this until we come up with a list of parks or um, destinations where they can't have it. Just an idea. Oh, is he making a motion to table? I don't know. Did you just make a motion to table? I need to know if that's what you're doing. Yes. Okay, Mr. Bonsek made a motion to table. Um, 
So that being seconded, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is not debatable, not amenable, and it is a two-thirds vote. So, ladies and gentlemen, all those in favor of tabling this article, meaning it won't go forward, um, at this time, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Let's count it real quick. Someone has to take it. Yeah. Well, it can come off the table. That's the thing. So, I will. Someone Maybe has use to my move book to enough. take it off the table. But it would have to happen this night. Or, or the next night. Well, if we go another night. Right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just to be clear, when you lay something on the table, it means it's put aside. It can be brought back at any time during this annual town meeting. If it is not addressed and taken off the table before the annual town meeting, actually, can I close without with it being on the table? No, you can dissolve it. Yep. That's what I mean. I, I can. Yep. Yeah. So it don't have to come off before we go. Okay. So it does mean that it could come back. All right. So a table means it gets put on the table, can go back tonight if we finish, or if we have to come back Thursday night. Okay. Everybody got it. It's the motion. It's all that's on the table. The articles never come. Okay. It's always a motion that comes, that's the moving, like the moving vehicle, so to speak. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, to table this requires a two-third. All those in favor of tabling, cards in the air, please. Requires a two-third vote. Mr. Basler, 22-0, 22-0, Mr. Pepe, 28, Mr. Armstrong, 48, all those in opposition of laying it on the table, which means we would vote it, cards in the air. I think that's pretty clear. <laughs> they didn't yell it would have happened. All right, Mr. Basler. 75. Mr. Basler, 75. Mr. Pepe. 69. Mr. Pepe is 69. Mr. Armstrong. 35. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the motion does not carry with 96 in favor and 179 in opposition. It required a two third vote. That's what I'm doing. No further debate. Moving the question. Quick, quick question, sorry. It's uh, Jared Kukuski, 65 Highlands Lane. I just wanted to ask really quickly from a legal standpoint, if having an ambiguously defined zoning law like that has exposes the town to any potential legal risk. What are you asking? If having an ambiguously defined zoning law like that where parks are not defined, if that exposes the town to any potential legal ramifications. So um, the planning board, when it entertains an application, they use um, their specific knowledge of the town and the enactments to define it for the hearing. But of course, any application is subject to appeal. So someone could appeal the decision of the planning board to deny, for example, a special permit on the grounds that the buffer is, is not, uh, the, the specific sensitive receptor is not in fact a public park and um, it would be for a judge to decide whether or not the planning board had 
good grounds to find that it was a public park. Although, to be fair, planning boards are given wide deference by um, the well, judiciary. I can't believe there hasn't been a case law that hasn't defined public, public parks. Well, I mean, in I mean, some seriously. communities, you have a park commission, and they would have care, custody, and control of your public parks, but Kingston apparently does not, so. Thank you. All right, folks, we're wrapping this up. You two, and that's it. I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Warren as well. Come on, go ahead. Uh, David Fuller, 233 Country Club Way. I, I think we're reading into this too much. A, a public park has a definition. It has a legal definition. We don't need a bylaw to tell us what a public park is. There's a legal definition. So for instance, if I wanted to make a bylaw that says, I, I don't want to sell, we can't sell oranges in the town of Kingston. We don't need a bylaw that defines what an orange is. There's a legal, de there's a definition of what an orange is. A public park well, is a public park. There is a legal it. definition. But this bylaw is not asking to define it. This bylaw is saying public park. Well, people are saying there's ambiguity here. Oh. There is no ambiguity. There's a, there's a legal definition for a public park, and that's what we're voting on. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Warren? And then you. Um, similar to uh, Mr. Kwiatkowski's uh, question, I'm just looking for clarification on how this might impact an HCA, given that the addresses are listed in an HCA. So if there is that ambiguity in You need to be into the microphone so people Sorry. can hear you. So my question is similar to Mr. Kwiatkowski's, but how this affects an HCA. So I, I, in my estimation, it wouldn't affect an HCA because the zone, um, excuse me, the Board of Selectmen is making that determination, obviously subject to local permitting. Um, and in fact, the HCAs that we have drafted have expressly stated that the board's decision on an AC, HCA has no bearing on whether or not a local body like a planning board or a zoning board or a board of health has approved it. They still have to go through those steps. Great, thank you. That could be anything. That's, you can find anything on the internet. Um, can you define UCA, just so that people know what, no, what the reference is? HCA, that's H the host Sorry, community HCA. agreement, which is executed by the Board of Selectmen, and it defines community impact payments and other restrictions that the Board of Selectmen may find appropriate. Right, okay. Um, that's just a definition. I'm, it's no different than any other definition you can find. It's not in Black's Law Dictionary. All right. Okay, well, then we'll go to that, because I'm calling on him, and then I am cutting it. So go ahead, define, who would define? She already said, so in this the definition instance, the of public board. parks would be defined by the planning board. Ms. Murray, are you listening to the answer? Public parks would be defined by the planning board and they're given great latitude in their determinations of the definition of public parks. Is that it? That's what you said? I would agree okay. with that. That's what she said earlier. Go ahead, sir. Donald Hill, 60 Elm Street. I would just say this, that uh, I can speak for Sampson Park. There's no question it's a public park. There's a monument, there's a plaque by the Sampson family, the date they gave it to the town of Kingston, and it's taken care of by the town's, town of Kingston as far as cleaning it up and rubbish and so on. I, don't, I can't speak for the other parks, but there's no question about that one. Anybody can ride by and read the plaque. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving the original motion under Article 43. This requires a two-third vote as a change in a zoning bylaw. So I'm gonna count it just right away. Save some time. So all those in favor of the motion under Article 43 say, I'm sorry, raise your blue and green card. Mr. Basler. Mr. Basler, 74. Mr. Pepe? 78. 78. Mr. Armstrong? 5-1. All those in opposition, blue, 
green cards up in the air. <laughs> Mr. Basler. Mr. Basler is 26. Mr. Pepe. 15, one, five. one five. Mr. Armstrong. Two, Ladies and gentlemen, um, the motion carries with a two-third vote with 203 in favor. So let me call it, 73 in opposition, total of 276 votes. The needed um, two-thirds uh, majority was um, 184 votes. Was that you, Ms. Coleman? I have a second on that. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to open debate and we discuss it, and we vote it, you vote yes. If you want to close debate and never discuss it again, say no. All those in favor to reconsider, say aye. aye. All those opposed? No. Okay, motion does not carry. Oh, right. On the reconsider, right, yes. Right, right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Article 44, Mr. Cohen. Move it. We got some things to get done. All right. Try to do this quickly. I move that the town vote to amend the Town of Kingston Zoning Bylaws Section 4.0 Use Regulations to add a new subsection in 4.21.4 Location, which would prohibit any recreational marijuana establishments as defined in General Laws Chapter 94G, Subsection 1 including marijuana cultivator, testing facility, product manufacturer, retailer, or any other type of marijuana-related business within a 100-foot distance from any residential zone and or residential use in the town of Kingston. The distance under this section is measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the property line of the proposed marijuana establishment to the nearest point of the residential zone and or residential use. Receiving a second on that, uh, Mr. Cohen, if you just accept again a, a friendly amendment under the uh, nine, general law chapter 94G section one. Sure. Thank you. All right, with that second, can you address your motion? Okay, um, so the ban has failed. The, this article is the compromise that everybody should get behind in order to serve the dual purposes of protecting residents, homes, and neighborhoods from any adverse effect of retail or marijuana production. It also lets these businesses establish themselves in order to provide the town tax revenue and get their doors open. This is the zoning that should have been adopted last year. If retail marijuana opened in the industrial park, I don't think there would have been nearly as much pushback from concerned residents. In fact, there may be stores open today. When I was notified as an abutter, I went door to door in the neighborhood and not one person I talked to was in favor of a retail location opening on any main street property. And this isn't a bunch of people scared about reefer madness either. I talk to young people, young families, middle-aged, retirement-age people, and the elderly. 100% of that neighborhood agreed that Main Street location is a bad idea for a variety of planning and zoning reasons. It will negatively impact a huge number of people in part of town that has historically been dumped upon with wind turbines, beer delivery trucks, and other bad deals for their neighborhoods. In the special permit process, there is a decision criteria that states the planning board can grant the special permit only if it can conclude that the marijuana establishment will create no substantial harm to the established or future character of the neighborhood or town. I would argue that there is no location on Main Street or Wapping Road that would fit that criteria. If this buffer is in place, the planning and special permit process for these stores will go much more smoothly without the resistance of, that, of those concerned citizens. To be clear, this article will effectively buffer and protect residences throughout Kingston, leaving commercial, industrial, and zoning locations 
viable for marijuana development if the town so chooses. We wouldn't be alone in adopting a residential buffer either. The cities of Springfield and Malden both have residential buffers in place, 50 and 75 feet respectively. Finally, I would bring to everyone's attention that the town of Kingston has a 100 foot residential buffer in place for medical marijuana treatment facilities. Quote, no medical marijuana treatment center shall be located on the same lot or lot which abuts or which is one within 100 feet of any public or private school building, daycare facility, or public playground, recreation facility, athletic field, or other park where children congregate, or any residential zoning district. I think it would only be appropriate that our adult use zoning would mirror the zoning for medical marijuana treatment centers. I urge you to vote yes on this article. It is a vote to compromise and put this behind us. This issue has seriously divided the town we all have to be able to live with each other after tonight, and a yes vote on this article will provide the compromise that will let both sides get on with our lives. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Randall? I have a motion to amend. It's in writing. I can submit it to you now. Okay. I, under I understand, but... Come forward. Give it us. Okay. Paul will handle it. Wait, okay. I don't know, that's what I'm going to. So it's, so your change is really at the end. It's mm -hmm. not changing anything in the front. Is that accurate to say? No. So you're changing with a hundred foot distance from, and so in changing that from any residential zone to from any primary building on any, okay. Yeah. All right, so if you can read that motion in. Uh, can I, can I have it back? Okay. <laughs> you haven't committed it to memory? No. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So this motion would move that the town vote to amend petition article 44 to read the following, and this is the entire article. That the town vote to amend the town of Kingston zoning bylaws section four use regulations to add a new subsection section in 4.21.2 location, which would prohibit any recreational marijuana establishment as defined in general law sec uh, chapter 94 G section 1 including marijuana cultivator marijuana testing facility marijuana product manufacturer marijuana retailer or any other type of marijuana related business within a 100 foot distance from the primary building on any lot in a residential district in the town of Kingston the distance under this section is measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the proposed marijuana establishments primary building to the nearest point of the primary building on any lot in a residential district in the town of Kingston we are proposing this amendment because we are no, no, not. No, 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 Greg, one second. I need a second. I need to move other things. And I, we need it back. 4.21.4. Yeah. 4.21.4. Yeah, okay. So actually, um, Mr. Randall, you have here in yours, um, add a new subsection in 4.21.2 um, location, but I think um, we're reading it as 4.21.4. So do we want it? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, then that's what we'll do. I just didn't know if there was an error in the first one. Um, all right, so ladies and gentlemen, just for clarity, um, the difference is that 100 foot distance from any residential zone and or residential use um, to 100 foot distance from any primary building on any lot in a residential district in the town of Kingston. And then the other change is the distance measured from the nearest point um, of the property line to the front to the nearest point of the marijuana established primary building. I know, but you have primary. I'm reading it the way it's there, which is to the primary building. Nearest point of the proposed marijuana established primary building to the nearest point of the primary building on any lot in a residential right. district. Yep. Yeah. All right. So it's the end of it that that is the difference in the change. Um, do we have a second? That being seconded, now Mr. Um, Randall, you can address your... We are proposing this amendment because we are not 
opposed to buffers from residential districts. However, as written, this article will serve as a ban and cause the retailers and others to be clustered if they can even exist. It could also put the town in a difficult legal position if it serves as a ban. To that end, because the ban got defeated as the petitioner for Article 40 and 41 has stated, uh, to that end we are proposing an amendment that would still put buffers from residents in place without serving as an outright ban. And from what I understand, uh, if this Article 44 were to pass without this amendment, it would effectively knock out every single retailer that has expressed interest in the town of Kingston. It would also... Come on. I understand that you feel that way, and I appreciate your feelings. Uh, it would also knock out a proposed marijuana cultivator, uh, which is located by the Kingston Collection. And a lot of people have said, well, why don't you just put it down there? I don't think people understand that at the end of Royston Drive, which is a branch off of Marion Drive, there's a residential lot. Uh, and so a lot of properties in that industrial park would be X'd out if this were to pass, including a cultivator, which we think could bring jobs to Kingston, high paying jobs, uh, and really give back to our economy without selling this product wholesale. It's not even a, a wholesale seller. So I would really appreciate if you su support the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Um, sir? This is on the motion to amend, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking debate now on the motion to amend only. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fonts. Uh, yes, I'd like to inquire of legal counsel. Um, I seem to remember seeing somewhere something about if you were to pass um, a zoning bylaw for, for, with the intent of creating a ban, that it wouldn't be upheld. Is that your understanding as well? Or is there something along those lines? No. Do you have that? Um, so, Maybe what you were, well, I don't know what you were seeing, but. <laughs> At this point, neither do I, so don't feel bad. <laughs> All right, come on. Me neither. Yes, so, so the reality is um, I'd be more worried about a, def this is essentially I'm understanding from the discussion that it would be a de facto ban because the properties aren't available. The distinction here is, and maybe this is what you're thinking of, in the adult, adult um, entertainment industry or whatever, um, there's case law that stands for the proposition that you have to not make it so overly zoned that there in fact isn't a specific place for that type of operation to operate. But that's only because it has First Amendment protections, whereas marijuana does not have First Amendment prote protections. Now, you would be concerned about a de facto ban if this were a uh, yes community, meaning you in 2016 voted for um, the legalization of marijuana because then that would trigger a ballot and bylaw requirement, but Kingston is a no community. So under your zoning bylaws, you could have voted um, by a two thirds majority to ban outright, I mean expressly, marijuana uses in the town of Kingston through a zoning bylaw. So that's, I don't know what you saw. That's, pre that's, that's pretty much it. I had, oh. I had read something along the lines of if you implemented okay, a de facto well, ban. In some yeah, ways I hate to it. say it doesn't so, matter what you read, she answered um, it. Okay. okay, so in other words, if you wanted a ban and didn't get it, here's your second bite of the apple. All right, okay. uh, Mr. Bunt, uh, Ms. Coleman. Jean Coleman, 20 Hollands Lane. With all due respect, we listened to enough amendments last year, and I would argue that that's the reason that we're in this position that we are in now, um, where we had to bring this back to the table. So I would urge you to vote no for any more amendments. Thank you. All right, go on, uh, Mr. Bonsack. Bonsack, thank you. <laughs> three, three, five, six, Peter Bonsack. I move the question. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen. This is on the motion to amend. Move the question on the motion to amend. Um, so all those in favor of moving the question say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Motion carries with minimal opposition. So on the motion to amend, which is to, as everybody has it, the changes? One more time.
The part that matters is this, the end where it says the 100 foot distance. Everybody follow me in the warrant? 100 foot distance from the primary building on any lot in a residential district in the town of Kingston. Okay? The distance under this section is measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the proposed marijuana establishment's primary building to the nearest point of the primary building on any lot in a residential district in the town of Kingston. All right, everybody has the differences? You all read what the original one was? Which is from any residential zone and or residential use. And then the other is from the nearest point of the property line to the proposed um, establishment to the nearest point to a residential zone or use. All right? So, um, on the motion to amend, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Motion to amend does not carry. Okay. So back on the original, um, yes, sir. Um, original motion. Uh, Fred Studley, 22 Riverside Drive. Um, speaking to the original motion, uh, according to Massachusetts General Law Chapter 94G of the regulation of the use and distribution of marijuana not medically prescribed under Section 3, uh, local control, subsection A, a town or a uh, city or town may adopt ordinance and bylaws that impose reasonable safeguards on the operation of marijuana establishments provided they are not unreasonably impractical and are not in com conflict with this chapter or with regulations made um, pursuant of this chapter. And um, speaking of compromises being made, uh, it seems like there have not been any. Uh, and we have dissected a law with ambiguous terminology and then substituted more ambiguous terminology into it. And with the last um, amendment that passed uh, with the parks and whatnot, now we're adding another um, Another restriction, uh, this is stepping on the, um, on the line of de facto ban. Just a little food for thought. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cohen? Sure. Um, so I went to several planning board meetings. Uh, there was a public hearing on this article where, you know, we talked about it. And, you know, there was far, far fewer people than are here right now. Um, and we did discuss the fact that, you know, this was not, in fact, a de facto ban. Uh, Rob, town planner, I don't know if you'd get up and speak to that, but... We did speak to if Article 42 passed and retail was allowed to go into the commercial and industrial zones in the industrial park, then this article would not be a de facto ban because it would provide some areas in which that would work. And also, I would assume that any relief granted, you know, there could be any of these stores could go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, you know, in an area like that if there's some sort of, you know, a residential lot in a... I'm pretty sure the end of Royston and Marion drives a sand pile. Um, no. If there's something like that, or you know, next to the mall, you know, we're talking like down a cliff, across barbed wire, through a river, like you know, I think that that would be an appropriate, you know, visit with the zoning board of appeals. I mean, I think that this 100-foot residential buffer will create you know less headaches for these stores in the future because if they try to go you know Main Street, Wapping Road any place next to a residence or a residential neighborhood, it's gonna be a problem. And, you know, if we can work together to, you know, get to this place in the, you know, these industrial zones, I think that that would be the way to, the way to go. Thank you. Um, Mr. Bradford, um, yeah, Mr. Randall, sorry. Uh, so first of all, there is not a house. There, there is not a sand pit at the end of Royston Drive. There is a house, a very nice house. Um, Secondly, we're hearing that this Article 44 is a compromise from the petitioner, and then we're hearing that if you want a ban, this is a second bite at the apple. So which one is it? This article will, in fact, ban all proposed locations. The article could leave the town in the same difficult legal position if it serves as a ban in effect. This article, it is deeply concerning as it includes the term residential use. Excuse me. I, I would just like to ex use my First Amendment right without being ridiculed. This article is deeply concerning as it includes the term residential use. This term is overly broad and nearly impossible to determine the impacts of without significant research. The petitioner has not provided maps showing the impacts of his proposal and as such town meeting will not actually know what they are approving. The petitioner indicated to the Board of Selectmen during the public hearing 
that the town use the same language in their medical marijuana bylaws, which upon review does not appear to be the case. The term residential use uh, is only re referenced uh, in this article in the medical marijuana bylaws, they talk about a residential district. A residential use is incredibly vague. It could include a commercial zoned building that has someone renting out a, a space to live. If the town is inclined to provide a buffer to residential zoning districts, we would recommend removing the term residential use, but that's not the case. So we would recommend voting no. Um, it's just not fair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bouchard? Then Mr. Bonsek, then Mr. Marabito. Yes, uh, talking to Rob and um, Jason over there, it, it, it was kind of like well, the article that I presented earlier, which added um, commer uh, commercial, industrial, and industrial, will somewhat be wiped out by this. And the reason is because there's residential properties that you don't notice a lot of them don't have houses on them, and they're tucked in all around the mall in all those areas that we're trying to open up to get the marijuana away from people's homes and up in an area where it's more industrial and more commercial. So the, that was the intent of the earlier bylaw which passed and, and you gotta look at the impact of this. The impact of this is pretty much to wipe out what we have passed earlier, which, which we did as listening to people that came to the planning board um, that was one of the suggestions. They wanted to open up more options that are away from people's homes. So now we're back to, we'll be right back to square one because you don't realize how many um, lots that are up, the, up there that are residential. So I just want everybody to know that before you vote on it and understand that, okay? Thank you. When you say the residential lots up there, up I meant the what's there? All the, all the areas that we earlier opened up with the earlier okay. vote. Okay. I just I want people to understand yeah, no, for I, sure. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mr. Bouchard. Yeah, I'm okay. I mean, Mr. Bonsack. That's twice now. Gina. I know. Sorry. Peter about Bonsack, that. Three Tree Farm Estates. Um, you know, I, I I really don't like the description of Bay Bean News that we're doing this for the safety of our homes. Like I said, pot has been around a long time. It's now legal. I've known a lot of people, uh, walks of life. To, uh, Nurses, doctors, multi-million dollar company owners, they smoke pot, okay? It's got nothing to do with the safety as far as I'm concerned. But I will say that talking to many people who would say they have no problem with having um, a, a pot shop in town, a lot of them I talk to, majority that I talk to says they don't want it near their houses, down on uh, 106 and the Burger King area. I have firmly believed when I started talking about this that it should be somewhere based down by the MBTA station. So I, I am voting for this because I think it's something that uh, the people of the Kingston want. Thank you, Mr. Bonsack. Um, Mr. Marabito. Bill Marabito, 303 Elm Street. I move the question. I have a move the question and I have a second on that. Um, all those, um, ladies and gentlemen, all those in favor of moving the question, say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ladies and gentlemen, the underlying uh, motion on Article 44. Um, it's a two-third vote, so I'm just going to count it right away again as well. Tell is ready. They're really working tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, all those in favor of the motion for Article 44, blue, green cards in the air.
Mr. Basler. 63. Mr. Basler, 63. Mr. Pepe. 72. 72. Mr. Armstrong. 5 0. 50 straight up. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, all those in opposition to the motion under Article 44, blue green cards in the air, please. Mr. Basler. 34. Mr. Basler is 34. Mr. Pepe. 19. Mr. Pepe is 19. Mr. Armstrong. 35. 35. 35. Ladies and gentlemen, the motion carries with 185 in support. I need to call it. The motion carries with 185 in support, 88 in opposition. That's 273 total votes. Let me just double check it. And um, to carry it needed 182 and it got 185. So the motion carries. I'd like to motion to reconsider the previous question, please. Motion to reconsider, Mr. Fonts. Seconded. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to debate this again, you vote yes. If you don't want to debate it again and close it, you vote no. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? No. Motion to reconsider does not carry. Ladies and gentlemen, Article 45. I would like to make a motion to adjourn, please. Um, I'm going to hear Article um, 45. Come on, we're here. We need to get business done. Well, well, it said 10 o'clock, and I have huh? It said, it said 10 o'clock, and we I don't all know who pins. told you 10 o'clock. It said it on the Facebook page, 10 o'clock. Well, I'm not on the Facebook page. I'm the moderator. I get to decide how long the meeting goes. I've gone to 1 in the morning before, so I want to finish this, ladies and gentlemen, Article 45. It's the taxation. Mr. Warren. Okay. Um. Shh. Come on. Mr. Warren, I uh, motion. On Article 45. I move that the town accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 64N, Section 3, to impose a 3% local tax on the sale or transfer of marijuana or marijuana products by a marijuana retailer operating within the town of Kingston. Having a second on that, ladies and gentlemen, Board of Selectmen, favorable vote 500. Finance Committee, favorable vote 500. Yes. Um, Mr. Warren, will you accept that 3% yes. local sales tax yes. friendly amendment? Yes. I we get a second? Yes. Got a second again? Okay, Mr. Warren, if you can address your motion. Uh, this article just adopts the Mass General Law that gives us the authority to impose a 3% uh, local sales tax on the sale or transfer of marijuana. Uh. <laughs> Mr. Font? Yeah, how much revenue do you think this will bring into Kingston? Uh, I mean, we've, we've heard all sorts of numbers, but I, I can't give you a, a firm number at this time. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, are you getting up? Oh, waving it off. Awesome. Um, ladies and gentlemen, all those in favor of the motion under Article 45 say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries with minimal opposition. That's only a majority vote. Ladies and gentlemen, Article 31, 31. I feel like we're in bingo. Back to 31. Motion to adjourn. What are we going to? We have five. I know. Huh? It's hot. Oh, okay. All right, who made the motion to adjourn? Two, two, Thursday. Everybody.
One second. Um, Mr. Colling, did you make a motion to adjourn to May um, 9th, 7 o'clock, Kingston Intermediate School? Is that what I heard? Mr. Cowing. I moved. Is that what you moved? Yes. I need it on the microphone. So okay. moved. Second. Adjourned to May 9th. On the Thursday night.